time. Um, hear us now. <laughs> Slam's like they're talking to themselves. I'm like, yay. <laughs> Dead fun <fire>. crickets. <laughs> Yay. Yo. <laughs> <laughs> First world problems. In past few days, so he's, oh my he's god! <laughs> it's the great. That is the greatest. <laughs> oh my god, they can hear me now. They can hear me now. I guarantee you they can hear me now. Oh my god, I'm telling you. I, I'm telling you. I, 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 in the last month, everything is updated. Windows open. Yes, yeah, <laughs> Skype. Every, everything's changed. Ah. So now I had to like, it's I just realized world. I had to go reset all my peripherals up. All my uh, audio stuff, uh, it, it all disappeared. I'll just <laughs> oh my god, that's just that's just too funny. All right, so can you I'll make sure the outside chat can hear me now? You can. Oh, there we go. Oh my goodness. Oh, this is gonna be crazy because uh, we always have problems at Roma Coke Night, mostly because you know Bullinator is not around. But uh, right. if Bullinator is watching this, he's probably having coronary. So I don't want to give Bullinator a heart yeah. attack. Um, that's bad. But anyways, welcome to Roma Coke Night. Where was wrong. Like, so so we do the introductions about. again that people didn't hear. It? Yeah, well, well, I don't know what the hell I said, but um, I'll, I'll just say this. <laughs> Landon. Oh. Yeah, we got, we got the chat, wonderful... Meet Landon. Landon meet your live chat. Live we got the chat. lovely uh, Landon I have with to us. Say... Ruben, Ruben, live chat. Wait, 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 <laughs> good, here, good, here, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on your time zone and latitude from your friendly secular astronomer. And uh, howdy, and uh, happy 4th of July, and of course, happy Canada Day. Uh, a couple of days ago as well. Happy 4th of July, even though it was celebrated yesterday, by the way. Um, but... Yeah. Uh, a lot of the uh, fireworks here actually were a couple days before. Hey, even though the decorations started being started on the second and other things, but you know, uh, it's, 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 been going it's off details. Here. Fireworks it's, have been going off here for like two weeks, okay? And I'm tired of it. And my puppies are tired of yeah, it. Yeah, dogs don't. Like <laughs> so we also have. You yeah. don't disturb the puppies. We also have the lovely know. drunk Manya. Uh, by the way, we're here Yay. for like an hour before, so people are already <laughs> inebriated. It is the way it is. But anyways, yeah. Manya's here. Uh, by the way, Manya, uh, I had heard that you left me and hated me and all this other <laughs> stuff, and I was really depressed, and I and I, and I was going to fly to you, you, the country that you live in, because I don't want to like tell people where you're at, uh, although they already know. But uh, It's New Zealand. Yes. I live in Auckland, to be more specific. I, know, I, 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 know, I, I have no problem telling people you're in New Zealand. I just want to piss off the Australian friends of mine. <laughs> yeah, because they're like, wait, you, you hang out with a Kiwi? It's like, really? <laughs> Oh, yeah. Listen, Steve, I love and, you. Don't worry. And we have two I other. Love you I know. I'm, yeah, I'm getting into them. Uh, we got we got Steve in here. I, um, you, I, we we don't know how to actually say his his whole thing, but he just goes <laughs> by Steve. He's down. I guess uh, down that way. Uh, yeah, it's uh, yeah. from right to left. Yeah, it's Arabic, and so I I've known him for a very long time. I just don't. It's called Steve, and I'm not even his real name. I don't think. Um, super chat, real quick. So, Desire Hanson, two dollars. Welcome back, Steve. The pheasants. Say happy for it. Thank you, thank you. Uh, say hi to the drunken peasants. I heard they got demonetized too. Um, you know what they should do? They should get a hold really? of yeah. They should get a well. They got the videos demonetized. Should they get a hold of H three and was H three Productions? H three Productions got H3, H3. <coughs> yeah. They got they got a bunch of creators re monetized, and so if drunken peasants yeah. is still having a problem, have them tweet out to H three and three or whoever they whatever that group yeah. is. I think so. You can cite their case because H three H three went to H3, court. H3, yeah. They took someone to court, and you can cite their case. Like, well, they were successful, so we are citing this case. Can you well, please have a look no, at they, the judgment? They got a, I mean, they can pick up the phone and call Susan, CEO of, of, of YouTube. Oh, okay. They have got connections, cool. legit. But uh, anyways, we also got Carl in here, vegan atheist. Hi, I'm vegan uh -huh. atheist Carl. Just here, chilling. I'm actually drinking a mixer of uh, Smirnoff Ice and Sprite today. Nice. So, so that's a good thing. So, so you're smart. What are people drinking? What are, what I'm else? just. I'm having. I, I was having coffee with brandy and a little whiskey in it, but I'm just drinking straight coffee oh. right now. But okay. you know what? I should drink it in my new cup. Should I, should I Christian my new cup? Yeah, look at my new cup. Agree to argue. 
I want to order that. Uh, they're going to give away nice. the first episode on the 8th, uh, Wednesday at 11 a.m. Pacific. I believe yes. they're going to be giving these away for swag promotional. Ooh, yes. Okay. What, does it, the, what does it say on the mug? Uh, agree to argue, ATA logo. Okay. So it's that's actually Ron is cool. Mighty I show. like the design. It's so that's like the geometric. Only, and the only thing is, I have to drink it with this hand to show the logo. Right, Pl- yeah. product placement. There you go. So, so hey, what are you? What, what else are people drinking? I am drinking the Rosé Hawks Bay. A nice New Zealand rosé. Yeah, rosé. Oh, Hosea yeah. two Jose Hansen two dollars says not peasants, the pheasants. You know a bird. Oh, okay. <laughs> Although that would be a good parody, the drunken pheasants. That would be funny, <laughs> right? Oh. Any other, other people? Uh, I was drinking ginger, but I'm about to go get some arak real quick. Ah. So, so I'm starting with uh. Be right back. Yummy, you know, uh, Pinot Noir. This is a uh, 2017 from. It's actually a combination of Monterey, Santa Barbara, and Sonoma County uh, grapes. Sort of, it's it's a three thing thing. So it's a nice nice set. And I have from uh, Son of Wolf, the uh, children of La Fiesta. This nice little cocktail. It's called the Ear of the Earth Dog, and it's oh. a nice. Uh, it's in a mason jar here. You're supposed to shake it up. I'll show you what it looks like. Uh, there you shake it up and then uh, go for it. So okay. that, that is my that. that's when it gets to and if if it gets has to descend in further, I have stuff up there to uh, move to. Yeah, we're, we'll start you know, with we, got a lot to, we got a lot to go over here. So let me get some of these things out of the way. I, I am Moon. Mm-hmm. Moon says for five dollars. So many congrats. Love you. Have missed you. Can't wait for you and Cheshire Vic to return. You both are my, are my two closest friends. We love you. Um, just FYI, I put out the schedule. Uh, we are doing caffeine corners on Monday. However, not this Monday. We'll be doing it on Tuesday for the fact that uh, Cheshire has something going on on Monday. Um, her and Bull and Air both will be unavailable this Monday. So we're moving it to Tuesday. But other than that, we'll go back to try to do our normal Monday. We're Hi, also, Cheshire. I see you in the chat. We also got uh, Over and Under on 8 p.m. Wednesday nights. And, of course, we're Coke nights on Saturdays now. Going to be kind of a more staple thing. And then some other things in between. Uh, yeah, people are asking. So this is my my new show with uh, Fuzz Ron. It's been about a year in the making. They're actually doing a full set design from West Covina Studio. Uh, their studio is in West Covina, and so they have a reason to believe headquarters. And they have a full. It is like a literally like uh, what you would know, if you went into like a new studio. It looks just like that. It's got the computer things and, and terminals and lighting, and it's pretty well done. It looks like a full actual new studio. They're doing a, a set design for that just for, just for Fuzz and I. Uh, so if you haven't subscribed to that yet, the video description link, um, agree to argue, it's, it's down there. So go go uh, subscribe to that. It's got about 165 subscribers right now. So if all you guys right now went over and, and subscribed to it, at least it would start us off. Now, they expect to have a lot of the theists and Christians watching that. Uh, they're going to be promoting it over the next week. Uh, and that's the kind of the big thing. It's going to be reaching a new audience. Uh, I've obviously... You know, said my piece with the atheist community. They don't want to listen. They don't want to. They, they don't want to actually talk about the arguments. They they're so dogmatic and so uh, ideologues any longer that as I have no use for them. And so, hopefully, we'll reach a new target audience of theists that would like to talk about the arguments and do so intellectually and show that we don't have to talk about people. We can actually talk about the arguments because the atheist community, again, I've been saying this bell for a very long time, seems to want to talk about people and not about the discussions. And I'm just not into that. And so if you want to talk about the discussions and you want to talk about my arguments, that's fine. If you want to talk about me as a person, you're not going to be welcome. And, and they already have a code of conduct for that. So anyways, but I, I'm looking forward to that because, you know, Fuzz and I have a very different perspective on things, right? His worldview is completely different from mine. And so he's an educated biochemist. I'm not. And so it should be pretty interesting. <laughs> but we hope to have guests on eventually. And we're going to take Q&A for the audience. So. Uh, if anybody's got any questions on that, you can go to www.agreetoargue.com and kind of see what the format's going to be. Uh, Hosea, two dollars again. Miss this show, please don't give up on atheists. Oh, I'm not giving up on the look. A lot of great atheists out there. Look, I am huge fans of certain atheists, and I and I have a lot of respect for some of them. I had a great discussion with Objectively Dan the other day from Truth Wanted. Uh, a lot of props to him. Uh, you know, I like Eric Murphy from Talk Heathen, but I see that the atheist community is more theistic than they want to admit as far as not necessarily a belief in God but they want to promote an agenda ideological um, bias they want to promote um, really crappy arguments and every time I point that out to them they don't seem to care and so 
when I was I don't taught, know if it's that they right. don't care. I think that sometimes when you've been indoctrinated into a certain mindset, it's hard to break free of that. Oh, I agree with you. This is what I'm saying, though. They have been indoctrinated. They have been programmed to respond with very specific things. I'll give you an example after I read this super chat real quick, then I'll get Lana's view on this, because he, he he knows a few atheists out there. Macab, uh, my friend Macab, who's, by the way, been around the GDC for God knows how many years. He was one of the original members. Got I it. heard that Landon is so awesome that they took him to be took him to some scientist and they hooked him up to a machine to measure how awesome he is, but he was too awesome and the machine exploded. That's a true <laughs> true story. Um, there's a lot of classified true. stuff on that, but uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, but 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 that was a, cool uh, that was ten dollars Australia, which is a really nice uh, thing to do. Thank you. Uh -huh. and yeah, and by the way, they they Australia is nice because they have really. Fun currency. I know. They're, I remember. I've been to Australia. They have these two dollar coins, which are really weird. Really? Yeah. yeah. I've yeah. never been to Australia. I've been to Fremantle and I've been to Melbourne. Yeah. But uh, so, land. I mean, uh, before we get, into, I mean, I guess we're going to have a whole bunch of topics we can get into tonight. But since we're on this particular topic, I mean, again, not talking about very specific people, but do you at least think that my statement? about the way the atheist community has been going over the last couple of years, especially with a lot of SJW agenda, a lot of uh, things they just want to say by fiat without actually showing that they'd be wrong. And I'll give you a really brief example. Last night alone, I had a, a, a literally an atheist tell me my logic was wrong because he said the principle of bivalence was wrong. The principle of what? Bivalence, basically law of excluded middle. Basically a, a uh, proposition is either true or false. Gotcha. It's true, okay. can't be false. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I saw that. <laughs> I mean, you saw Steve, it. part of the part of the problem is I think some people come to the atheist community from a dogmatic religious perspective, and they haven't unlearned those behaviors. I they agree. merely just they've just merely just swapped the symbols around. But some people continue to behave and have not learned how to behave in a non-dogmatic way, right? and that's that's part of what I think you you see with some people. It's a learning um, process. They, no, I think you're they, exactly right on that. They, they exchange one, one, you know, uh, one set of, of dependencies for another, and and that's kind of unfortunate. Uh, Hosea, for two more dollars. Not everyone, but some people can't sure. disagree with that, and that sucks. Um, yeah, it really does suck because I think Landon is spot on there. I think that a lot of atheists, when they come, I, I say the word deconverted, I guess, or they stop believing, um, they have the same ideological um, I guess, fervor. Well, I think fervor would be a better word. They, they're they very passionate yeah. about things. And by the way, when you're a theist and you can't actually articulate why you believe in God, or you don't have any grounding for it, you don't have any good arguments for it, um, and then all of a sudden you say, look, I realize I don't have any good arguments for God, and I, and I don't want to, I don't believe in God any longer. I'm now, you know, a non-believer. And then they have the same fervor about why they can't even justify their non-belief. Then they get very defensive because as somebody pointed out the other day, I've said this before too, if you have non-belief, you still need to have a justification for it. This is where me and a lot of atheists just have butt heads because they don't think that you need to. But, I mean, hey, Coral, if I said, hey, Coral, do you believe in climate change? And you say, I would say you? yes. That's according to the scientists. Okay. That is the best, uh, I guess, the best evidence for what's going on currently. Okay, lie, lie to and me then, for a second. Wait, 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 lie to me real quick and say, you, you, if I ask you say, and then say no, do you believe climate change is real? No. Okay, Landon, she doesn't, uh, she doesn't believe climate change is real. Now, she doesn't hold the position that it's false. She just doesn't believe it. Do you think she should explain why? And, and if you're going along this line, then you basically go through the whole means of saying, no, she's a blah, 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 blah. She's because... a climate change denier. Yeah, yeah, and 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 you know, here's the thing that 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 for example, I would I would if someone asked me, do you believe in climate change? I would respond back saying, what does my belief have to do with the state of the climate? Why, well, why are you what interested? Means you accept and it. Let, if, if if you if you want to talk about the the data, let's talk about the data. But but here again is this sort of you know, when atheist says, do you not believe in God? They're asking it sometimes in a religious context, just. With a knot sitting there, which doesn't work, right? And on the other hand, if you sit there and say, "Because I fail to deny," doesn't mean I accept. Right, exactly. That was if, my whole gumball. If gumballs I fail to accept, gumballs accept gumballs it doesn't mean I deny. That was my gumballs it's, it's and logic. God. But yeah, that, that, that was my gumballs and God, which, by the way, has been undefeated. 
Um, but the same thing is though, she has to justify why she doesn't accept climate change. Just like an atheist who says, I don't believe, needs to justify it to hold a rational position. That's only been my argument, and that way it's undefeated. Yeah. But a res $20 Australian, it's been too damn long. Welcome back, Steve. Did you enjoy your uh, involuntary vacation at the least? No, I actually, honestly, I hated it. Um, I, I, I just, I got a lot of stuff done that I wanted to get done. I've been working on other things. Um, but you know what? It's just the fact that I we'll, we'll, we'll switch gears here because I've talked. I don't want to piss Cheshire off too much. We've talked about uh, our <laughs> the atheist community. Uh, you know, because she's a big fan of the atheist community. <clears throat> no, I am. Don't, don't you dare! I think we just have a lot of growth to go because it is, um, you know, fluid, and that it's important to keep having these conversations because we will never be able to grow and be able to communicate and have better discourse if we don't continue these conversations. Oh, I think you're absolutely right, too. I, I even say it's time to get back to basics and remedial stuff because we get a lot of new mm -hmm. people in the community and we'll be getting a lot more, you know, once we get argue goes live. Uh, and so they, they're, they're going to be exposed to a lot of stuff that you guys all take for granted because you've been, you've been hurting it for years. But Hosea, $2 more, party for justification all day long. I agree. <laughs> You know, it's just, it's just common sense. Look, if you say, party, party, you say, if you, say you don't believe in climate change, I want to know why you think that's a rational position to have, why you don't accept it. What's the reasoning? By saying, by the way, uh, I just haven't been convinced climate change is real is, is vacuous. That doesn't yeah. tell me anything. Yeah. yeah. And I want to know I think you're silly you, for not, not accepting just what you believe in and why you believe in it, but how did you get there? Yep. Because the, a lot of times, a lot of the positions that we hold, they uh, have come from, they're learned by our, our society, by the indoctrination of just everyday things like our entertainment, our education, oh, our religion, yeah. uh, oh, yeah. all of those things. I mean, it's just yeah. like with um, people's diets, you're much more likely to be a meat eater if you were born into a family that eats meat. You're more likely to be a vegetarian if you grow up in a family of vegetarians. Yeah. And we need so, to have a show. We don't. I, I want to do a whole show on vegetarianism, but I want to do a show on nutrition because yeah. you know I, I, I've tried to do diets and I and I I've, I know a little bit about the concepts, right? A protein versus carbohydrates, which is fats. Mm -hmm. How much you need, how much your your base metabolism is, yeah. and I love to have a discussion with that. We'll get a new actual nutritionist as well, but we, I love to have a discussion explaining to people. Look, this is how many calories you need per day. This is what your base me metabolic rate is. This is, this is how many you need to burn yeah. a pound of fat, 3,500 calories. Why you should have, I mean, I believe you should have more protein, you know, but again, it depends on the person, but. Avoid sugar. Uh, Americans you already get have stuff. too much though. You can't, yeah, you don't have too much protein. That would be bad as yeah. well. But too Americans much of anything is a bad thing. Way too much. Our yeah. protein yeah. Uh, proportions are way skewed. Yeah, well, oh yeah, no, I, I, there's a, there's a, skewed, there's a, but... there's a breakdown <laughs> of, of how much you need. You know, back to the thing you talk about uh, that, that belief thing versus facts. I mean, it it is sad when people argue about facts. But it's also sad when you when you talk about, you know, do you believe in climate change or do you believe in extraterrestrial or it's like saying, well, do you believe that eight plus eight equals ten? Yeah. No, I agree. And, and, and I'm not disagreeing well, with you. Well now what I just come back and say, well, what does belief have to do with eight plus equals ten? I'll give oh, you by a the way. Back. Well, it's by the way, um, well, and, and say, but 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 you're 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 absurd if you believe that. And I say, well, I was talking in base sixteen, so that's no, I I, I, I I agree with you, but I'll give you a little pushback on it, uh, Landon. Let's say you have somebody okay. like Manya, and let's say Manya was a complete idiot, right? <laughs> let's pretend here. She's an idiot in the room. So, so, <laughs> so, so yeah, I, I picked. I picked by the way, I picked the person with a master's degree to for this right. example. So, so let's say Manya has never looked into climate change. She knows nothing about it. She has never even uh, read anything about it. And you say, hey, Manya. Do you believe in climate change? And she says, no. Okay. Now, again, she needs to justify that. Just like I, I, I think that, you know, lack of belief atheism and requires justification. Saying that I don't have any knowledge. On right. She has topic. no information to draw upon. So she's not, that's a, that's a, so a reasonable excuse of why she doesn't accept it. Now, if Landon, you say, look, it's a fact that climate change is, and here's all the reasons for it. And then she evaluates it and says, oh, I think these facts are wrong. That's going to be a problem. Yeah, and it's also the case where you we come it's, back and you yeah. say really that it's it's about the fact you know you say a better question to ask is is what 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 is the data that's relevant and 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 you know what conclusions are reasonable yeah. to draw from that data it's, or it's a fact that in last decade the average temperature of the earth 
has has gone up. About one point eight. What about one point eight Celsius? But, yeah. but the problem with putting it in, to put it into belief. The average temperature, taking all the highs and the lows together. So that kind of tells you, yeah, the Earth. But the is real problem, up. but but there's a big problem with putting it in area of belief is that then you can have these sort of belief debates over stuff. Mm -hmm. well, and, yes, no, and it really is not. Well, 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 it really comes day. down to trying to, to, to debate you can't, facts. Why, why do we, that's, I, I, that's my thing. I don't think so, why no. do people try to have belief-based arguments on facts? Hang on, so let's Steve go for it. a sec. Yeah. Josiah, one, one sec, right. Steve. Two dollars, Josiah, it's pronounced Josiah, not Spanishy. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> Steve, go ahead. What were you gonna try and say? Uh, well, Mania, the reason the belief debate comes up because when you're saying a certain uh, subject or um, proposition is true, in this case, um, climate change, uh, global warming, uh, your average person on the street doesn't even know the arithmetic of how to arrive at that that's conclusion true. that that's yeah. true. And you need to demonstrate why that is the case. And in order for them to conclude that's the case requires a mental assent, which is what belief is. Yeah, I agree with that. And that's what I was going to tell Landon. Um, all you're saying when you say, I believe climate change is real, is that you're you're you're, you're affirming that's the case, that, that, you, that you actually accept it. That, so just, you don't have to use the word belief. You can say, do you accept climate change is real? Yes. Because right, that, it doesn't that, change that, the fact that it that, is, that, right? That, that, they're actually a factual question. I would say yes. Uh, but let me explain to you what I mean by climate change. And, I perf and, and let me give you a better term which is you know climate forcing for what's happening, but yeah. but there you can get a discussion and get on the nuances right. as opposed to if it comes down to if you're reading really beliefs, then you have politicians that say, well, our uh, our party's dogma says yeah. blah. But right? that's not but that's yeah. not a fact. That's an that's an opinion based belief, right? It's, it's yeah. funny. Yes. Landon spoke about politicians, and I remembered some politicians from back home in India who were going. I'm an on atheist about to politics. <laughs> Sorry, sorry, my banshee laugh came out. So, <laughs> so the, the politicians back home in India, they go on about, oh, if you drink cow piss, you can cure COVID. And this oh, actually, oh, this, actually this, this- Don't do it. Cow, don't cow, it. cow no, urine? No, 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 yeah, no. I've heard that as well. And there's actually um, a guru who's good at yoga and stuff. You know, he's got few herbal medicines out there and Ayurvedic medicines out there. He said that his medicine cures COVID, and I'm like, holy fuck. Yeah, well, that's the kind of stuff that I argue like, against, right? Because that's not a fact-based belief. That is a, yeah, that's, they that's, did you know. cite some studies, though, but those studies, if you, if you study them properly, then you realize that actually they don't say that this medicine that they've come out with cures COVID. It just talks about basic flu and stuff. And I'm like, and people believe it, and... Even after being debunked, that organization that this yeah. guru leads, they're celebrating it on social media that they found a cure for COVID. And I'm just like, I'm just like, yeah, I need more wine. I mean, yeah. Yeah. So, 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 so the way to think about people. it, maybe this is that, that if you say, given the the data on on climate and climate forcing, what mm -hmm. should be our public policy about it? And 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 that's a curious. Now now you're in an area where it believes you. Know, do you believe that our public policy is an effective response to the climate data? That's yeah. I think that's where our yes. belief can can show up. And in many ways, when you're talking to somebody about climate, you're really asking, do you believe that the policy is justified? That yeah, says I mean, being promoted believe, by candidate X or, well, or political party. Like, and, do you believe well, if, that it will work? Well, they could be yeah. like beliefs. Do you believe like the anthropogenic gases are the primary cause? Mm -hmm. Some people can now. I there now. The, the, I I actually talked to who was a pothole with fifty four one time about this very very topic, and uh, even he had to agree. There's no definitive study that's that says anthropogenic cars, gases are, are the primary cause. However, it's it's indicative. I mean, it's it's kind of one of those things that they're not going to spend a lot of money for that because. It, it, it's so kind of self-evident that it is at least one of the primary causes, if not the primary cause. But if somebody says, look, I believe anthropogenic, anthropogenic gases are a leading cause, but I think that solar radiation is a bigger cause. Okay, what's your reasoning for that, right? I mean, you can have that belief and not be a complete idiot. Well, but that's, but that's, that's again, that's, that, that's an area of science where we're going to have experiments and data and analysis that has nothing to do with belief. Do you believe that given the data, we should do this with our climate policy? 
that is probably something yeah. more more akin to belief. Yeah, like oh, exactly. A belief would be like, what do you think well, our policy be, be, should be? Because there's no facts about policy, right? I'm sorry, you're, you're going to say something else? Well, um, Lennon, let's just say, for example, somebody, a scientist, well, not a scientist, but just your average person, again, off the street, he knows the data, but he has no way of articulating justification for that um, statement about climate change that you just mentioned. Um, if I, like, say they, let's just say they say, oh, scientists prove this, 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 and this, and somebody just questions them on their epistemology of their justification for that assumption, and they don't know how to defend that. Uh, oh, that's how, true. But, you know, but here's it, the thing. It, Even if they can't, uh, it's, it's fine to defer to climate experts, right? Mm -hmm. it, it is, but you need to justify why that's the case. You need to be able to defend that I don't think that's hard to do. and intellectually. I, I, because, mean, I, I don't think it's very difficult to do at all. Yeah. These are the experts. I'm going to go with the expert's opinion. I mean, you yeah. find you say you find this 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 argument credible. You find this policy a you believe this policy is a is a credible way to implement. I think I think this. I understand, though, because, you know, you see creationists, young earth creationists tell their experts. And I think that's more along the lines of what he is alluding to. You can find an expert to say anything. And that's true, but that's not a consensus, no. though. There's, you're talking about three or, three or four standard deviations from norm. The young earth creationist scientists, which I use the term scientists, right. they're not, but uh, <laughs> they're not the norm, right? 99 point, was it 99.7% of scientists, and again, that's within three standard deviations right there um anything beyond 99.7 is three standard and beyond that's going to be just normal statistics at that point i mean you're just going to have people that are just fringe but overwhelmingly scientists accept evolution right i mean that is a confirmed theory that is a fact there's not a matter of let yeah. belief about it right they don't you, you and if don't you're gonna make it. a extraordinary claim that somehow that fact is 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 wrong you better have extraordinary evidence that's the least, that's the thing. Is, but, but but when um, when creationists talk about well, they believe this. They believe the Bible. The Bible says da 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 da, and they try to degrade the the debate down to their belief versus your atheist belief. Mm -hmm. Then you know. Then then it, you could you kind of lose it. You lose it. You're playing their game. You're losing it. Uh, I, I think in a big time. Uh, so I think beliefs well, about policy, beliefs about what we should do about it. Um, are, are 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 quite fine. Yeah, I do. Um, beliefs about facts are somewhat pointless. Yeah, well, facts are ubiquitous. Uh, as uh, who was it? Um, uh, what was it? Uh, who was she? Was the uh, she was the head of the uh, National Science and Education? Um, what was her name? Jean. Jean uh, I can't remember her name. Somebody put on the eye of it. I hate names. But uh, she had actually noted that facts, when it comes to science, are the most irrelevant things because they're so ubiquitous. A, hypoth a theory is greater than a fact because a theory is, is a collection of facts. It actually does yes. something with them and actually gives you something you can use. Facts are a dime a dozen. It's a fact, you know, that I'm looking at a monitor. It's a fact that can't land and breathe to survive. These are it's a mm -hmm. zillion infinite amount of facts up, uh, out there. But uh, Josiah says again, fireworks show is about to start. Boom, boom big boom. A oh, bang boom, y'all think. Okay. Mm. Well, this, well, it, it goes back to like, Don't the. Don't forget the heart between, emoji. Well, it kind of also goes back to the difference between a hypothesis and a theory, whereas in theory, sure. better explains the data and better models, whereas in hypothesis is more predictability it's, based off of it's, the data. It's, yeah, it's, hypothesis... it's, it's an educated speculation with yes. justification, right? Absolutely. And, and, and so you can't just hypothesize by saying, I hypothesize that the moon's made of cheese. Um, you, you gotta. <laughs> you, you, you have to, to to put something behind that hypothesis. Um, yeah, it's more. And if it's shown to be a fact, then you can have a theory that has had false. You know, particularly if you're doing the falsification process, that has withstood efforts to falsify it. So we have a we have an interesting question in here. Uh, Locks logo says Stephen. I was Cray, hoping you would hear at that one. <laughs> honest question. Wouldn't that be an appeal to authority, even though, though, Steve, how does one avoid the appeal to authority? Why is appeal to authority bad? We all appeal to authority. There's nothing wrong with that. If you take college course and you write a paper, guess what? You're appealing to authority on a, on a persuasion paper if you cite sources. Sure. There's nothing well, wrong with appeal to authority. There's different types of appeal to authority. It's called argumentium ad vericandium. There's, there's a fallacious use of it, and there's a legit use of it. But appeal to authority itself is not necessarily... By fiat, a fallacy. In fact, it's actually yeah. a good thing that you do to appeal authority mm -hmm. if you're writing a persuasive paper. 
this is a common mistake that or, a lot or of you're not make. pressurizing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like if I yeah, like if I say, oh, this is true because X says it's true, or if I cite somebody who's not relevant to authority, that would right. be the if I, if I say climate change but... is true because climate change scientists say it's true, uh, that would be appealed authority. And if I say it's more likely the case that far more likely the case that climate change is true because the yeah, because say they, so, I am persuaded fine. by the majority of, of, of scientists regarding what's happening with our climate. That is a statement. And it's actually sort of even a statement, but, 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 but again, it's not appeal to authority, right? It, you I sometimes may. want to appeal to authority, especially as you said, you asked, well, how does someone who doesn't know about the details and study details, what do they do? Well, relying on authority and, 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 and reasoning about it is what they have to do. Yeah. If so, I may, hmm? um, so you can you can say that okay you are justified in your belief because oh, you wait, know, hang on one second. Steve, you're gonna, of, hang on if, I, uh, I gotta mention this before somebody does if, if you're gonna uh, vape you gotta mute my audience is gonna go nuts go ahead I'm sorry Monia. what did I do did I do something wrong no 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 okay I'm drunk so excuse me so that's my excuse all the time so I'm like, okay, if you cite authority to justify your belief, that's that's fine. And authorities can be wrong. Scientists can be wrong. That does not be, mean that um, you are being, um, what do you say? You're being, you know, you're lying on purpose or something like that. In future, authorities can come up with uh, whatever authority that you're appealing to to justify your belief can come up with new data and new proof to say, okay, we were wrong, so we are modifying a view. So this is the new view, or this is the new, you know. Fact. That's like the scientific method, that. right? Yeah. Yeah. And so uh, exactly. You can you that doesn't mean that you were being wrong on purpose, or you were misleading people, or that you were lying. It's just that you were just going with what the, you know, the the leading body that investigates all these, you know, or subjects was going with at that time. So, yeah. So well, that's why science is the best explanation available given the current data. Yeah, yeah. given the current. Yeah. Same with evolution, same with, you know, your um, germ theory and all that, your vaccines and everything, you know, that go that go out on out all there. So, yeah. So and what Riley says, to me, what makes an appeal to a scientific findings a justify appeal is because it is an appeal to the conclusion, a proven method more than the individual researchers. Absolutely. Yeah. The scientific method is a well-established methodology. Um, mm -hmm. Well, there's many different types of the scientific method, really. But I mean, overall, the scientific method is exactly what I said, is the best explanation given the, the, the most current data. Now, somebody had brought, Monty had brought up earlier that statistically, Overall, um, there's been an increase in temperature. And again, I think it's about 1.8 degrees Celsius over the last 100 mm -hmm. years. Yeah. Um, I don't think anybody actually denies that, do they, Landon? Is there any actually yeah, climate scientists? They, they actually, do yeah. because they don't no. understand the mathematics. There, there, so there that's are, bizarre. People that deny it too, Politicians but... who are in charge of making policies, they deny it because they don't understand the mathematics. They, that's but, but a lot of people, a lot of people, there are people who deny you know, lots of Two facts. Different. Yes. But, but What's the reason? it is a case of, yeah. There's different cases too. Um, I think yeah. they they they, hey, hey, they have ahead. they ahead. have adopted a a a sort of a a particular group, uh, maybe a, a climate cult, and that climate cult tells them you have to fight against these things, and so they deny because they have this faith that their climate cult is right. Anything that goes against their faith must be wrong. They are presuppositionalists mm -hmm. on the question of climate. So they presuppose uh, okay, I can, I can, I can that their that, sure. political faith is right, and anything that goes against it must be wrong. But even, even I, I'm sorry when I start when the math, when you're saying the math is wrong, you need to have a very high burden of proof <laughs> yeah. to show yes. that. I mean, we, we've no, been through this with, that, before with people that denied actual what they math. Go with this, I think that what they say is they don't understand the average is of both the highs and the lows, and if the average is still going up, it means relatively your temperature is going up whatever the high has been whatever the low has been the fluctuation doesn't matter as long as the average is going up so they don't understand that they think just because the fluctuation is up and down this is another another high and it will go low but it's, it's no different than a fundamentalist that goes along with what they're taught about young earth creation from the pulpit and just yep. parrot that stuff, right? It's, it is a, it is a, I am in this camp. I have bought, 
I, by faith, I have subscribed to this, this belief system. And anything you put against me, I'm going to give you the catechisms to say, blah, blah, blah. Right. That's, that's yeah. really, and that's unfortunately where we have some policy debates now is because politicians are, are catering to certain cults. And there's oh, also yeah. a different uh, set of people, de- of climate deniers that are denying that it's caused by human yeah. uh, but, causing it. Um, they're trying to blame it on yeah. that the, the earth goes through natural waves or that uh, it's caused by the whatever. And so, and that it wasn't caused by humans. And so they try to make that argument. Yeah, no, I, I've had people come out. Please. Please, please. All right, go ahead, Mara. I know I keep quiet when I need to. Okay. Slam Run is saying how much man can do is limited because China and India will not follow policies. No, as an Indian, I will be the de- devil's advocate here. I know why they're not following it. They've got a very simplistic, straightforward reason. What they're saying is that all the developed countries in the world, they, during their um, industrial revolution and stuff, they gained whatever technology they had and they you know made the progress that they had so now in now in this at this point of time they have all the technology they need to move towards you know whatever the green piece and the you know policy is there for reducing the global temperature third world countries like india and china who were exploited by these first world countries they are behind by 30 or 40 years in technology in basically technology so their reasoning is that why are we are behind we are behind we are catching up why should we participate when we are still catching up we shouldn't so, be made yeah, now, and yeah, so there's, there's a fallacy there's a fallacy in what you're saying and that, 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 okay. no, what they're what they're no, saying no, right no i'm just presenting their point yeah. of view and, and the fallacy of, of, of those view. nations is that you have to follow the same industrial curve right. no, no, to no, reach no. there right mm-hmm. and and no, that's, not that's, that. that is and 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 that's the no, policy no. saying you know why why do you get to have this history of going through polluting no, 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 reach no, no. it i will i will they say we uh, what i know about Ch- india i don't know about china what india says is they're ready to participate but they need some leeway all right they need some a- a- answer is no some- no for example on human rights there are countries that went through slavery and the slave trade, about. and they don't need to go through a period of slavery in order to I'm treat not, people equally. It's the same argument, and it doesn't work. It's not. They can be smarter. India and China can be smarter than us. They can be smarter than us and not go through the mistakes. For it. If they're asking time, there must be a reason. And you're of no, not time. Smarter now. Warming and the response to it. Smarter now. Obviously, getting into topics. But the thing is that you can't really the whole country. No, it it really is. I mean, I, I, I I know this debate going on in policy, international policy, and it doesn't work. Right? It's it's a fallacious thing of give us time to be polluter like you do. Listen. that's both. Okay. Uh, uh, India, wait, 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 wait. Okay. Mania, Mania, Mania. India, India is one of the leading polluters in the entire world, right? If I'm not mistaken. I know, I know, I know. And I'm not saying that they are. I'm not saying that they. They're saying is they need to catch up technology-wise. And I agree with Landon that they have to be smart about it now. But mm-hmm. given how the third world, I'm not saying to excuse them. I'm saying give them a little, little leeway so they can catch up. If they if they don't catch up and they're not showing, they're not committing to the actions that kind of demonstrate that, then you can put them in the middle of the court and you can say, what the hell you were doing? We gave you what you wanted and now you're still not there. So they have had decades to, to, to learn. Um, we lessons. got like, um, oh, freedom, like, uh, years Carl, 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 Carl. Well, well, I mean, uh, the best they attest to is the stupidity and greed of, uh, Indian politicians. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know anybody with, in politics. I agree with you. Hey, Carl's been waiting patiently. I have. I was just saying that I think that one thing that we can take from that whole conversation is that everybody can be better humans and we can um, ask for our leaders and our government and uh, people like that are influencers to be better and to not allow certain groups 
to make excuses when they can make change. And um, that's what, why there's, and it doesn't matter what the topic is because we can all do better, but we must have accountability. And that's, yeah. I think, what Landon's saying. Okay, yeah. what is it? What is the yeah. Okay, when you have a, a, a behemoth like China, um, uh, how, what is their accountability when they probably right. have a very high carbon footprint? They don't care about human rights. Let me look what's going on with Hong Kong. Yeah. Um, I mean, oh. they're one of the leading, oh. you know, uh, forces in the universe against, you know, basic hu hu human rights and free Absolutely. speech. So, what is the ramifications that they have by by being that way? We we we're not going to have embargoes. We're not going to have trade embargoes. We're not going to have. We're not going to do anything against China. They, they right. own how much? How much land does China own of America? How much of our, of our economy is, is dependent upon China? A significant portion. A they own huge our debt. amount. And yeah, they have a lot of we have a lot of debt to China. <laughs> right, it, but that's the thing. That's the conversation we need to have. Is how do we have? Uh, how do we hold these uh, other countries accountable? And how do we hold ourselves accountable? Because the only way that we're going to see change is by doing that. I recycle. Well, the other issue is China is one of the, uh, aside from the U.S., China's also leading in AI, artificial intelligence, and research into that. And they're using, a, they're also using it for malicious intent to keep the populace suppressed and under control under the regime. So, so they're, they're issuing Skynet uh, to destroy humanity, is what you're saying. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay. since yeah. well, since the state, since the U.S. and China are both competitors in AI, and both have their own reasons for doing so, I don't. I'm not really seeing in any policy or implementation of halting the uh, greenhouse effect on both ends really changing anytime soon. So, oh, I think we've already had the precipice. I don't think we can actually change course if we if we tried. I think Florida, no offense, is going to be underwater pretty much completely in the next hundred years. Yes. I mean, yeah, no. I mean, ideally, the best you could hope for is there's a large populist uprising and overtaking of corporations and businesses. Yeah, but but that's not going to happen. Yeah, yeah, there's a way to do it, but it's probably not going to happen, especially with how divisive we are right now, to get people motivated to change and to um, have effective action. Uh, it's it's probably not going to happen. We ourselves, we're even going to have trouble holding others accountable when we're so divided in our own country. And I mean, we can't we can't even elect a president, right? Yeah. Oh, we'll get into that too, well, probably. And, at some and, point. The, <laughs> and I think I also I also in terms of and I think it this this does not apply to anyone here that that's, that's talking. But I also want to point out just for people listening that my criticisms is over the government of India and the government of China. When I talk about the appalling human rights record, I am criticizing the government of China, not Chinese. When I'm criticizing the, the policies of India, I'm criticizing the Indian government, not people of India. Yeah, and and that's, that's an important, that's important. distinction. That's, the other a thing, important. Yeah, that's a really important, and, and I know this doesn't apply there. I know that you all yeah. say, but I want to just state that on, on the record. Yeah, the yeah. other thing is, is that, that the climate debate um, is not simply about climate deniers. There are people, and I will condemn her behavior of the Greta cult that makes climate oh. science a really bad, gives a really bad name by putting fallacious arguments well, just as religious just a figure, audience on, on the other side. Yeah. And, and this is why I say we need to take it out of this cult following ego stuff, talk about the, the data, and then ask questions about the policy of what we need to do now. Yes. Because it's important. And, 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 and try to get away from the climate denier, climate... All right, so what policy would you implement? Thing. Let's say you're you're in charge of a secretary of state or whatever the hell it is, uh, interior secretary of land management, I don't know, whoever the secretary is for the energy. Uh, <laughs> I guess all of them have kind of have a hand right in it. Now. Yeah, so, they so, probably so, got fired. Yeah, no, no, yeah so, they so, could so, change so, every week. I'm, I, I'm curious what other people say. I have, I have some some thoughts, but but other people, what what sort of policies uh, would you think? Well, no, uh, well, uh, regarding what you said, getting out of the cults. Um, Partially, yeah, but it's also those same people who are part of that cult you need to bring this information to of why this is a deep concern for not just 
us, not ju not just for, say, the um, other, but also to them as well, because they are technically a part of society, of the society and system. And they, because I've talked to this before with uh, some friends of mine who, uh, particularly in the church, and I've uh, told them, uh, yeah, this is a real issue, and here's why, and. I've given several reasons why to basically convince them, look, um, climate change is real. Um, the ice caps melting because the over excessive uh, CO2 by the demolishment of um, trees, as, uh, which absorb most of the CO2, and also the um, uh, chemical imbalance in the ocean that's killing off uh, uh, sea life uh, due to the over excess, um, et cetera. Uh, you basically have to take it to those very same people because the people who are primarily indoctrinated in that are largely the leaders who want to keep the people complacent in that line of thinking. So it's also, yeah, you need to go with the facts, but you also have to bring those facts to those same people on the ground, a part of that cult who are like, okay, um, I'm not too sure about, about this. So, about so back, talking about in terms of the policies you would implement, what do you think? Well, personally, I mean, I definitely think we need to have a whole re revamping of our energy situation. Um, yeah. We are far too dependent on coal and oil. Um, now, granted, the, the energy density of coal, coal and oil is pretty good. Uh, you know, people know I'm obviously a huge fan of, of nuclear reactors, but even then, um, I think we don't invest enough in uh, alternatives. And even though there, so the thing with the alternative is that when you have things like solar, wind, and geothermal, they are a very small percentage of the actual power to the power grid. Usually it's about less than 1%. And in California here, we have uh, solar windmills. That's actually, most of that goes actually to Arizona, to their power grid. Plus it causes damage to the environment because birds killed by, thousands of birds a year are killed by these things. But it's a very small percentage. And so we talk about green energy. It's not just the fact we need more wind silt, uh, like mass scale stuff, but smaller scale. I mean, we could put solar cells on a car and it would help things. But the problem with that is we have to have technologies for batteries. Batteries are your limited, most limiting things when it comes to these types of vehicles because they're very heavy. But you have to store that energy somewhere, right? So they've gotten, I mean, starting back in the days of like the first, you know, Baghdad batteries, they've come a long way since you had manganese dioxide, so. zinc, and you had then you had, you know, lead acid batteries and nickel metal hydride, and then you know, now you have thorium, uh, um, Lithium ions, which are having, having high capacity, but we still, I think, are missing out on on, on high density uh, types of batteries using nanotubules that I think one day will yep. revolutionize cool. things. So, we Steve, already... I think I think that you have to have a energy program that's multimodal. Yeah. You, you need because there's no one energy source that's going to do everything, Correct. and every energy sub source has its pluses and minuses. But the other thing you need to do is energy efficiency, right? That 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 all these energy systems you have have consequences and being more efficient with the use of energy and having less waste is another important part of the, the so thing. So when are so, we gonna have yeah. an antimatter reactor? That's the most efficient, that's 100% efficient. <laughs> There's literally, but, as, but, an antimatter but, reactor is 100% efficiency. I'm not, I'm not talking about the efficiency of the power generation. I'm talking about the efficiency of the use of power. Yes, right? Yeah, I know if what you we mean, can, but... If we can get, if we can do more with less power, we will have less consequences. Every energy system has its pluses and its minuses. And, and climate is being impacted by some of those minuses. So I, if you have less energy, less energy waste, and again, and again, I think nuclear is part of it. I think solar is part of it. Hydro wind, geothermal, yeah. Comprehensive. biomass, yes, absolutely. none biomass. of these things are, are important parts of it, the multiple modal system, but also using less, making your energy do more so you need less energy is also going to be important. You know, it's funny, I worked at a biomass steam plant one time for a little while after I got out of the Navy, and the people that worked there were all ex-military for the most part. <laughs> and they were ex-nukes, like myself. And so, because here's the oh. thing, people don't understand. The bio, a biomass steam plant or any kind of steam plant, whether it be geothermal or whatever, the secondary sides are almost identical. The, uh, the, the primary is, you know, that could be completely different, but it's still, if you just took it as a structure, it's just a heat source. It's all yeah. it is. Uh, uh, whether it's a reactor or whatever your, 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 your heat source is, it still is functional as a heat source. But your secondary side, they're all, it all takes a heat source and turns it into steam somehow to drive a turbine. That's all literally how every one of these things works. So it doesn't matter what your heat source is, whether it's geothermal, yeah. nuclear but, fusion. But again, if you if you waste less energy, 
yeah. and you use, do more, be more effective with the energy you have, then you can do more with less. Yeah, and biomass use date palms around here. I know uh, Todd's freaking out because it's trees, but yeah. But w the biomass steam plant was near the Salton Sea area, and uh, they have date palm, date trees galore, and th you know they just you know building up stuff. So the date palm trees have to go somewhere. So they sent them to the biomass steam plant. Paddle wants to say something. I don't think it's very productive, but yeah, whatever. And it's very <laughs> messy. Yes. I have an unpopular opinion on what we can do. Um, the single most important and easiest thing that we can all do to help stave off climate crisis. Go vegan. Well, that 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 mean and, and that that example is a case of of doing you know doing more be more efficient if if your yep. process is feeding yourself. Get there are more efficient people. ways to feed yourself than are quick are doing. And there are consequences of the inefficient way of feeding ourselves. Quit mass agriculture that has to do with uh, clearing out rainforest so that cows can graze and cattle yeah. and all of that stuff, livestock can graze. Uh, you won't have as much methane because methane coming from these cows is a single one of the biggest uh, would you be okay with grown meat? Like, what? Uh, would you be okay with uh, like synthetically grown meat? Yep, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I have and no... so I, I, so you're more I, I agree. Veganism. I agree with you, and this is part of why doing being more efficient. If you're if yeah. your process is feeding, yep. you can. There are more efficient ways to feed yourself than what we're doing now. Absolutely, and all of the if we got rid of all of the grazing land and use it for foods we can actually eat instead of the the bunch of soy that's uh, done for feed, we could yeah. actually and, feed the world. And be careful about, about rice production as well, because rice yeah. production is a particularly significant emitter yeah. of, 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 of greenhouse yeah. gases. So, Absolutely. but, so, but there's better ways to do rice production as well. It's not that rice is bad, right? The same Correct. sort of thing. So, so yeah. be more efficient with your resources. It's and, about it's and about have a, have a mix. Not just Whoa. what is uh, more efficient, but also um, we should be looking at policies that reduces harm uh, across the board as much as we can and encouraging people to look towards those types of solutions. No. Right now we are centered on uh, corporate, right? Greed. Big and, corporate. And being, we are takers. We, we are consumers. We consume everything. It's very selfish way of living. But if we uh, can have a change in our framework and our mental framework and say, what can I do personally to mitigate uh some of these things and it doesn't have to be really big it could just be doing small things every small thing it builds up on itself yeah i think that's a good idea yeah i agree. well i mean i'm not saying I, out um, i'm just saying I, mean, I, I want to clarify something um before when i and landon were having a back and forth what I am I was doing at that time was I was representing what, where the Indian government is coming from, their yes. view. And, and I was I representing was, where the I American government care. was coming from. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> so, yeah exactly. We, were, we, so were, we, were, we, were, we weren't yelling at each other. <laughs> kind of like I started yelling because I was drunk. Please excuse me. So yeah, <laughs> just clarifying. Just clarifying. We, we like each other, but we were, you were yes, seeing the policy. I love you. And, and these You're allowed to disagree in here, unlike at, other places. At, yes. at, at oh, we love oh my goodness. That. When me is drunk, she's a mean retorter. <laughs> you a mean drunk. I'm drunk. I, I finished half the bottle, so it's it's half? Is it half? No, it's not half. It's one third, isn't it? Landon's like, girl, I'm get not, out of here. If you haven't yeah, I've, ETA, I've, only, I've only gone through ETA, half of my way, wine glass and, and maybe a quarter of the cocktail. So I've been... I don't know. I just lacking. went for it. I was like, chucked <laughs> it down. So I'm getting a resin here, and I think I'm getting... Uh... Hey! Nikki in here. Uh, before they do, they got to go subscribe to ATA. Yeah. Well, well, I have a question. And it's in regard to the policies recommended as well as change in lifestyle and uh, particular uh, diet. Um, mm -hmm. What do you do with the people who are resistant and refuse to go along with either of those? The people that say, 
I want mine and it's the hell with it's yours. All, it's all, it's it's all about education. Yeah, I, mean, I, I eat meat. Carl knows this. I'm Antisocial. That's the key word, eh? I like my chicken. Right. I, I, I'm married to somebody who's still an omnivore, and my sister lives with me. She I'm an omnivore. Is, she's an omnivore. But here's the thing, um, I don't judge Coral for her arguments. I, mean, I think, I, I don't yes. think she has like bad arguments. Um, it's just not enough to convince me to go vegan. Yeah. But I mean, I, she's an articulate, educated um, person on this topic. Yeah, I happen to be. I happen to be a vegetarian, but that's that's beside the, the, the point. The, the thing you're, is, wait, that you're a vegetarian. The day... Yes, I think I do that. You're not uh, vegan, but you're a vegetarian. Uh, the I'm day not, they I'm... start. The, the day they start manufacturing that synthetic meat at affordable prices, it's the day I will, I'll just leave. Oh you yeah, know, I'm going. down for that. I I, yeah. I totally yeah. with that. I would want to see how the manufacturing of the synthetic meat Landon, is with regards there. to any resources, <laughs> right? Right. Just because exactly. you can again, make yeah, it. Again, there's yeah. A, yeah. Yeah. Landon, yeah. By the way, you know what? They'll have synthetic yeah. meat, but it'll actually turn out to be soy and green, and we'll all go, damn. <laughs> Oh, that's another oh. thing, right? How much, how much energy we are going to waste, and what kind of energy we are going to use to yeah. manufacture that kind of meat? Well, also, so that's another well, thing, eh? Also, so also, is that synthetic meat going to contain the same amount of protein to balance out the amino acids? But also, what? On Sorry, I didn't that. that. On top of proteins and amino acids and all of that stuff, you also have to look at right now the way that nutrition is. Um, they are seeing um, a lot of, and I want to say correlation, but um, the studies in regards to meats and what it does to our bodies isn't looking too good for even if it's a synthetic meat. And so I would have one of the biggest things, my only hesitancy with it would be, yes, what is the, the carbon footprint of making these synthetic meats? But also, how is it gonna affect my, my body and my nutrition? I, uh, as soon as I went vegan, no, with no oil and no, uh, no sugar, I dropped 40 pounds. So, well, carbon, uh, simple carbohydrates and complex carbohydrates, uh, I, I think, are the, one of the leading gods of people gaining weight and for certain people. Yeah. Like, not me, yeah. I eat carbs, I bl I'll, I'll gain weight if I, if I have, yeah. same. Well, even if, but it's what type of carbs that you're eating. If you're eating complex carbs, you won't. Oh, yeah, no, I do. No, breads, uh, well, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, complex carbs, not, not, breads uh, are complex carbs. Yeah, no, no, no. Uh, I'm talking about whole food, plant-based, um, like beans and legumes yeah. and that types of, well, those of are, carbs. Those are good because those are not just high in carbs. They're, 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 they're actually high in fats, and fat, those kind of fats are very good for you. Yes, yeah. and because uh, you can live on a high-carb, uh, yeah. whole food, plant-based diet and um, lose weight because that's what yeah. I did. Steve, and, Steve. and, it, and yeah. it sometimes it's fun. There's a lot of fun stuff in the vegan and vegetarian diet. I mean, I've been I've been coming quite expert at making oat milk, right? Oh, and oh, and it's and so it's good. wonderful, wonderful oh. textures, wonderful flavors. And if you know how to do it right, it really is is quite quite yummy. And then you take the and then you take the yeah, pulp that's left that. over and you make nice muffins and other crazy stuff like that. I'll try you can it. Use the whole. Oh, oh, uh, Golden Ball so Unicorn, $2 New really? Zealand. I love Landon. Love Landon. <laughs> oh, she loves you. Thank you. <laughs> Oat milk is so good. And um, the thing I cheat on the most is vegan ice cream. And I like the ones that has the oat milk or the cashew milk the best because it is just, yeah. it is that has that creamy fattiness I had ice cream. that's in the regular. I, and if, you, if, you're, if you're trying to, if you're on a budget, you know, the, the the taking rolled oats and making oat milk is is a lot less expensive than than dairy milk. Okay, I have a question. Okay, because you two are yeah. the experts. So Smitty okay. here is saying, stop calling shit that isn't milk milk. So why do we call whatever we get from oats oat milk? Because it's the milk as it describes the thing. Just like we it, we don't we don't get you don't get to say well it's dairy milk, but we. It's because its milk is used with dairy so much, we can leave off the dairy. Dairy is the source, the modifier of milk. Milk is a particular type of, of, of emulsification. So like juice. oat milk, almond milk, dairy milk, cow milk, Coconut goat milk, milk. all so, those are various types of milks. 
Oh, okay. Got it. No, I'm not. I'm just, I'm just I'm just to milk being just animal based. And uh, mm. so now people are, are expanding uh, the, the descriptors. So, so let me ask you this. Uh, McCaw makes a good point about his cat. Cats are, uh, are uh, carnivores. Cats cannot live on a vegetable sure. diet. We, both, we all know that. That's the type of thing. So do, 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 how, do you, how do you resolve that? They can't be vegetarians or vegans. Uh, you can, uh, well, I mean, it's just like having, it's just like having, uh, our, our diets. You can supplement with, uh, a whole food plant-based diet with the certain things that cats need in order to be obligate carnivores. There's certain chemicals that they absolutely have to have. Um, those can be added in as supplements. Yeah. Um, so there's there's ways to do it and you use the, obligate carnivores. I, I, heard, I haven't heard that term in ages. I, 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 I'm yeah. still looking into. I'm still looking into uh, some of the um, the animal foods and stuff like that. My dogs currently um, still eat animal based foods because I want to make sure that before I transition my animals to anything that they're going to be healthy. And, um, and so therefore I kind of have to end up being, uh, I have to dig into a lot of the research because a lot of the research is done by the actual companies and it's mm -hmm. not unbiased research. Uh, I, and so it's, it's really hard I, to I, get the right information. I would, I would be, I would, I would be interested to know that, um, what's the carbon footprint of a domesticated cat or dog with what they're eating and stuff. And then that of the wild. You know, sure. it, it depends where you're at because yeah. the larger, but, but the way yeah, they procure so. their so, the way the, the, the meat is procured or the non plant based is procured. Yeah. I don't think so. The ones who are in the wild, they are, they are affecting the environment mm. or the carbon footprint that much as humans are doing. Yeah. I think yeah. that's yeah. so, kind of right. I think most pets so are. So they're being carnivores is not a problem. I think most I've pets are. Being carnivores is a problem. <laughs> I'm not a veterinarian, so I don't know. Yeah. My my pets are plants. I don't have any, you know, mammal I, based. I, I, pets. Most most pets. I have are, bunnies as well, well and they are herbivores. I grew bunnies, up on a farm. Bunnies are herbivores. I, the, right. but I grew but up most on a pets farm are, with are, cats are, and geese and sheep and all those things. But but I now just have plants as pets. Pet food is big business though because. Yeah, Most yeah. pets are like, like uh, Nazar points out, they are obligate carnivores. That's a fact. Yeah. Dogs are a little more lee. Dogs are a little bit more have a little more leeway. Cats, none. They they're strictly carnivores. But right. but the, 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 what, would you, what, what do you guys think of this? Forgetting about the, the 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 repulsive factor, but what happens if they use dead people to feed cats and dogs? I'd be okay with it. We are recycling. Because you know this is like, I, yeah. I, I think about it's this. It's recycling, but, but... As long as people are consenting... It would be, be a volunteer program, I'm just saying. But yeah. don't you have to be careful as to what part of a... Of, of a yeah, of just a, don't put yeah, the brain I mean, Obviously, there's things yeah. that are probably, you know, like, we can't eat people because of the, the pi prions, right? We can have... Right. The problem with eating people is you can get uh, brain In Matrix, diseases, you can. But... In Matrix Reloaded, you can. <laughs> But, but, you know, I, I'm just, you know, cannibalism, you know, again, I mean, there are some ethical considerations, obviously, but I mean, yeah. if, if there is a, because like the mass pandemic, people are dying off and they say, look, I want my body to be used for science. They can volunteer for that. Um, I want my mm -hmm. organs to be transferred to people. They can volunteer for that. Could they actually volunteer? If, if, if I don't know, again, I'm not a, a veg, I'm not a, a veterinarian, so I don't even know if this is possible, but what happens if they say, look, we, we want to help animals and they can feed on me like worms do eventually, anyways, and bugs. So why not put it to good use and let cats and dogs do it where they don't have to like get their meat source from actual cows and, and that reduce that footprint. Again, I'm just throwing this out there. Well, uh, it, you know, there's, uh, by the way, if you haven't watched uh, Snowpiercer. I haven't, but awesome. I know what it's about. Uh, oh my gosh freaking awesome movie and they just have a tv series that just came out and like mm, beautiful on philosophy if you like, want to take human a flesh uh, so good but um like for one of the things that i wanted to mention though is um cats need something that's called i think taurine something along those lines and so what a lot of the vegan cat foods have been doing is adding those that supplement in so that they're getting those chemicals um, 
so that it's appropriate for. Yeah, I know what proteins or amino acids specifically they need, yeah. so I, I, I don't it's know. Like, but... It's like taurine or something like that. Um, so that's, I, I'm still, yeah, I, I, I've been pretty impressed by some of the, the research that I've been looking at for that, but um, I still have such a long way because I'm not a nutritionist and I'm trying to like figure out what is right and not right. But I think the way that I, a lot of people misunderstand what veganism is and it's important to make sure that um, that distinction is kind of a, established that veganism is about reducing harm wherever possible and practicable. Yeah, and, no, I'll, get, I'll get a nutritionist on one of these days, I promise. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I, I just for the record, I'm a vegetarian for medical reasons. I'm not a vegetarian for for animal You're not ethical. Not, right. right. And and but I don't mind people who who have and, and I just want to say, you know, here's my here's my oat milk. Um and if I put white food coloring, you would not know that this is not dairy milk, right? And it's 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 one part oats, four part water, twenty four seconds in a in a Vitamix or bullet, and use a use a t shirt to strain the the material out, use the leftover pulp to bake things like muffins and other good stuff and this is the so and and you know this this sort of thing you know, a gallon of oat milk probably cost me maybe 20 cents uh Kimawaki says i'm pretty sure that jonathan swift's and modest proposal was satire not a dietary prescription and by the way that's one of my favorite reads if you guys have never read jonathan swift's a modest proposal um about how it's an amazing, the irish famine and potatoes and, and boiling babies and <laughs> It, it's yeah. brilliant. It's, I mean, it, I mean, it, it's masterful. It. Um, I don't think I've seen, I've seen it's, it. It's, it's a, it. it's, it's a, I mean, Reddit. in some ways he's trolling that. Oh yeah, it's, it's a complete uh -huh. troll, but I mean, it's brilliantly written and people, yeah. and actually people thought he was serious, but he was trying to make a point, which he really kind of did during the Irish famine. But anyways, uh, off topic there. Um, I do want to switch gears a little bit here. All right. Uh, well, I just want to ask all right, one thing. Oh. oh yeah, we've been kind of going. Yeah. Well, what would you say in response? Well, say somebody says, well, I'm not convinced veganism is really practical because let's just say he appeals to the two different uh, osteopathicines uh, that were in if Africa at the time. Um, one was dependent primarily on vegetation uh, for the survival and the other, same thing, but they included meat into their diet, all those virtually leftover bones and they were sucking the marrow. Uh, the meat that they were getting um, met the, need, the protein needs from their, in their digestive system, which is practically in ours today. Uh, thank you, evolution. And they survived, but the ones that were primarily dependent on, not veganism, because it's anachronistic in terms of that point in time, but they were largely dependent on their on vegetation for to meet their dietary needs, to meet the protein balance, et cetera, mm -hmm. of uh, their digestive system. Those particular ones died off due to the harsh conditions that they were facing uh, way back then. Well, we do have to well, would uh, you... factor in evolutionary considerations, right? I mean, uh, Macabre says for $10 Australian, this very thing, feeding our cats and dogs, ferrets, et cetera, vegan diet is animal abuse. I don't care oh. how you try to rationalize it. It makes you a sack of... Uh, ST. Uh, rabbits, like most herbivores, are opportunistic and omnivorous. And, uh, are nif uh, um, uh, uh, opportunistic and um, uh, um, uh, omnivores. But so I, I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. I can understand why people want to have their animals a vegan diet if, again, they get the proper nutrition. I don't think we're right. at that stage where they get the proper nutrition yet. And I think that's Correct. Cora's argument, is that, no, she's yeah. not going to start feeding her cat strictly vegan right. because right now that cat would not survive, and she knows that. Um, and, but there are, I would agree with him on other people that have tried to do it and the cat dies. Yeah, that has animal abuse, but that's not what Coral's saying. Right. That's that's not what I'm, correct. That's not what I'm, I'm promoting yeah, at all. Yeah. I, as I said, oh, it's all about uh, reducing harm where possible and practicable. And if it is not 100% sound and we don't have the data to back it up yet, then you have to wait until you have that evidence in order to do so. Mm hmm it's yeah, the same cause... when some people feed their dogs chocolate sometimes. Super Chat you know. T, five pounds, no comment. And I'm not going to comment on anything legal because uh, I got legal stuff going on that I'm working on. And 
People can speculate anything they want about anything, and I'm going to let them. Um, and I just have no and comment across the board. And jump on an axe yeah. with both their feet. Yeah. I will say this, though. I, I, I will say this. There's only one thing I'm going to comment on because it's just bizarre. Um, and then I'm going to leave it at that, is that uh, I would never throw Cheryl, Cheryl into the bus. Um, I've not done anything with Cheryl uh, at all, legally or otherwise. Uh, I wish her the best. I, you know, I have no ill will. I've never done anything against her. I've never shown anybody her DMs. I would never show anything private to anybody. So anybody who came up with that narrative is just an idiot. Uh, but other than that, I just anything anybody who asked me anything legal on any of that is just going to be no comment. Period. Um, because yeah, I, again, have this some is, patience, guys. Yeah, there I mean, will be will, fireworks. Here's the thing. I will say this. Everything will eventually come out. That's a fact. Everything eventually yeah. will come out. Um, and I will always be on the stand side of right. That's it. And, and I would say for right now, it's none of your business. It's a court none matter. Yeah, yeah. Business. Drop it. Yeah. So, I mean, I, 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 don't, know, I don't know why it, people it, buy into such bullshit Steve, that they hear going it, around, it, though. It, but it, whatever. It, it, it's Steve's business, not your business. It's the business of the court. Yeah, legal stuff. You're not stuff, the court. Yeah. You're not Steve. Yeah, I could talk about but I'll, I'll be happy to talk about certain facts, like with Kyle's stuff. Um, I've already cleared that with my lawyer. Um because, but, 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 but that we'll get into eventually as well. Um, I do, but I do, I, like I said, I do want to switch gears, but before we do, are you familiar with the name, the trade argument? Anybody familiar with that? No. Name the trade argument kind of goes to the veganism a little bit. What, name the trade is basically what traits do humans have over other animals that make us some significantly different, different in evolution as far as um, what we have that other animals don't have as far as compassion, empathy, um, and, and some other things that why we hold ourselves to be a special um, group uh, other than the right to survive other than like the animal's right to survive. It's called the name the trait uh, argument. And I'm probably okay. butchering it a little bit because again, I don't okay. Know so um, I know that uh, one of the things we do here about is, um, and we shorten it to like um, lions though, or canines though, or intestines though, or whatever. And in the end, it ends up being um, almost uh, fallacious and appeal to nature fallacy um, because just because we are um, just because something is how something has been like our canines are shaped a certain way or just because whatever reason insert the the thing there it doesn't change the fact that you can live a healthy and a thriving life on a plant-based lifestyle and by doing so would reduce overall harm in the world and I think that that is one of the most important things. And also the other thing that I would say to uh, appealing to nature like that is we do see empathy in animals. There are studies uh, with not just uh, primates, but also with elephants and dolphins and even chickens that show their intelligence and their empathy and compassion. So you said there is and no so, trait. That's what separate. I'm saying is that there is no unique trait that we have that is not found somewhere in nature. And uh, the most of ours is just a social construct that we think that we are unique and that we are more important. As we have said, a privileged status. Very selfish. Well, I mean, and, I, we don't have the trait, but I think we produce things like technology and stuff like that. And, and the ability to comprehend our universe, I think we, we we as humans probably comprehend the universe better than other species, even though I don't think we have a, a comprehensive understanding of the universe at all. I think what we perceive is not exactly reality. But we, we I only I, let me people tell people I only get six people in stream yards. You can hold ten people in the waiting room, and I know I got M Nikki out there. Um, well, we could also look, so, we could also uh, think well, further. Hang into on, the I, I got Rez in here. Rez wanted to say a few things. Um, but I want to get Monty, uh, so Nikki in a few seconds. So don't go anywhere, Nikki. But Rez, what do you got to add? Oh, uh, well, oh, it hey, seems buddy. like you wanted to move on. But hey, oh, I didn't want to. I didn't want to interrupt anything because you guys were having a great no, back and ask, forth. Yeah. La. Love um, it. I just wanted to add a sort of extra dilemma I personally have with this whole vegan thing. And mm -hmm. Carl, you and I have had some back and forth on Twitter about veganism Absolutely. i personally don't have a problem with veganism except that for me to personally go vegan would have too much of a detrimental effect on my life that 
versus the effect it would have on the environment, I don't think it's worth it. However, I would, I would definitely vote for policies that would enact vegan change down the road. And I'm not so concerned with the moral implications of veganism. And I think a lot of vegans, not you, Coral, I know you're not like this, but most vegans I've like interacted vegans. with are so consumed with the moral part of veganism that I feel like they're short-sighted because what do you do with all those animals once you do eventually free them all from, quote-unquote, human slavery? Do you just kill so, 90% Yeah, that's of them? a little bit of... Uh, okay. Peter, Peter's all for killing animals. So again, there's a little bit of a True. fallacy as well. Uh, so this is actually a very common argument that we hear. And um, it's I like to compare uh, switching to veganism uh, just like smoking. People don't just quit all at once. So it would end up being a downward trend. And as consumers aren't buying as much meat, they don't, the farmers don't produce as much meat and won't breed, therefore breed into existence just for the sole purpose of using them for food or product or whatever. And so it ends up being a slow, gradual transition down until there's a healthy uh, number that can be uh, put into whatever sanctuaries or whatever. And there's probably always going to be people out there that eat meat regardless, whether it's for medical reasons or whatever. But by it's not just going to be like tomorrow we are going all vegan right now and then we have a billion animals we have to contend with. That's not what's going to happen. It'll be a slow, gradual thing over decades well the, the problem i have with this is that you're you're not going to change enough people's minds on the moral argument alone which is where right. most vegans seem to be aiming their rhetoric at which like, is not like going to skeptic. work yeah the only way you are going to get people like me to care is if you can make um meat alternatives taste as good priced at the same or lower and have less harmful effects on the environment. And the I, only way you're going to achieve this is by policy, either restricting meat industries or pushing vegan agendas by funding them more. Now, by doing that, you are going to see very sudden shifts in the meat industry. Mm -hmm. And there will be periods where there will be more animals than we can sustain. Yeah, yes, I, I think I, my yeah. thing is this. I believe in ethical treatments of, al of animals, right? I believe in stewardship, right? I believe as the fact we are, um, we, we, human, uh, we have, because of whatever reasons, domesticated animals, they are dependent upon us. Yes. And because they're dependent upon us, we have an ethical duty, an obligation, a deontological uh, ethical concern that we need to treat animals with proper respect and, and treat them humanely. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't go out and hunt. I believe, look, when you got you know, invasive species and you've got uh, reasons to go hunt for food, all for that. I'm not into trophy hunting. I think it's despicable. But, but you know, we. I think that people have a moral obligation to be ethical to, to, to their, their pets. Uh, look, I think it's a, a, it should be a bigger crime to do, like, harm, a, you know, a pet uh, than, than it is right now. I think that our laws are pretty well um, insufficient in that regard because they treat them as property, right? Cats and dogs are property. Um, and I think that's a, a, a bad way to go uh, legally, because if it's a property, you can do whatever you want with, even though there are laws against animal cruelty, but they're insufficient in my regard, you know, in my my opinion. But real quick, Little Miss Betty Page, two pounds. Keep doing you, Steve. Thank you, Little Miss Betty Page. Thank you, Roger. I, I do also want to say, too, that if you look at what's going on in the dairy industry, we already see what I was talking about happening. We have whole refrigerators at the uh, at the local grocery store now that's dedicated to plant-based milks that were never there before. I agree, and but they're not as good. Dairy. I don't like plant-based stuff. I've, have you have you had Beyond Meat? I'm sorry, Taco Bell. I love you and Del Taco. I love you guys. I, lo I love Del Taco and Taco Bell and all that stuff. Beyond Meat, not that good. I mean, I'm if you're vegan, not, it's fine. You get used to it, I yeah. guess, but that's I'm not a big I'm actually not a big Whoa. fan of Beyond Meat. I like the Impossible Burgers, but I'm actually yeah. more of a fan of, like, black bean burgers and stuff like that. You find what I've you had, like. Well, I've had vegan stuff, stuff that's actually been really yeah. good. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, I, really I, also, I also really like the Impossible Burger as well. I haven't tried yeah, the Impossible yeah. Burger. I, I need to. so good. Mm. 
<laughs> yum, yum. So, um, well, I, I think we food. I think, I think yeah. we'd all I think I think you may should just switch to falafel instead of meat instead. Ooh, falafel. Yeah, I like falafel. I like. Hey, hey Steve, can I can, can I just drop you for a few minutes yeah. to get Nikki in here real quick? Is it okay or? Sure. I can. Okay. I keep it. I I I, I got to do this. Uh, By the way, I I make one of the things I add to my falafel mix, you know, with chickpeas, is a little bit of kumquats. Oh, interesting. Well, okay, so I'm interested. I, I like need chickpeas. Okay. So kumquat gives you that. It gives that little bit of a bite, right? Not Ooh. enough to make it sour, taste citrusy, but it but it does get that little See, bit I'm of a bite. I'm a big fan of that kind of okay. stuff. I love chickpeas. I love gabon, gabonzo beans. I'm down. Yeah. Um, I love hummus. Beans. Just hummus a touch. is like Just a touch. the bomb. Ooh. I'll eat the hell out of some hummus. Yeah, hummus chickpeas. Oh yeah, yes. <laughs> yum yum yum. Yeah, I get like I get I, when I when I do if I ever do splurge because people do it on frugal, um, which we'll get into in a second too because I got some stuff to add on that. But I I, 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 I sometimes get this hummus, and I forget what they put on top. But it's um, oh. they put nuts and they put this like yes. Nuts. Oh, oh you know, my god, it's so amazing. You know, you know have you had the chocolate ones? No, uh, I don't want to chocolate. The dessert ones. hummus. Oh my gosh. Dude. So no hummus. Okay. You know, you get these like bottle of juices in, in the market, which are like full of like sugar and stuff, yeah, right? Yeah, I don't like the sugary drinks. Back home, we used to have like street side vendors who would like squeeze out the juice for you real time, like and add nothing in it, like just salt and yeah, I, I, that's the, and, that's, and that's we would have drink. sugar cane and uh, mandarins, oranges, mangoes, pineapple, you name it, and the and, and and we have another, um, what do you call anar? I don't know if there's someone Indian in the audience. I don't know what do you call anar. You know that big citrus fruit which has like citrusy seeds in it. Um, the oh, red one, the uh, pomegranate. Yeah. Pomegranate. So, yeah, you ask for it. Even radishes and uh, sorry, not radishes. My bad. My bad. Sorry, carrots and stuff. So you ask for it, you you would get it. And that was the best thing, and that's the thing I missed. From I, I that like natural time. juices, right. but the thing is, is that they're still high in fructose, and fructose is still sugar. So you gotta be cognizant like, of that. No, but, but it's all like, natural, right? But right? Even, it's natural. It doesn't Nothing matter. All natural doesn't mean it's good there. for you. you. You you gotta avoid a lot of your no, but, sugars yeah, and but, fructose sometimes. Yeah, so you could choose what goes in your juice with those with that. You know, but like a Mountain Dew has 54 vendors. grams of sugar in it. Um, those yeah. monsters, but the, I drink the uh, low carb, yeah. sugar free monsters and rock stars. But the ones that have sugar in it, they're again, they're over 56, almost 60 grams of sugar per yeah. serving. It's ridiculous. But um, yeah, Nikki, what say Nikki, you? Hey. Hi, Nikki. Been a while, oh. my my dear. I'll, I'll shut up. Now. Hello. You you, you haven't been around out. much. You've been avoiding us. <laughs> I haven't been avoiding. Are you I've been crazy hiding. now? Have you, have you joined the dark side? Of course I have. I'm, I've, I've always been on the dark side. You Come on, you know that. Double this. agent trait. You're the it's spy. You see, he's oh, a spy. Double agent. I'm no. I'm not a spy. <laughs> That's okay. But you, because you, you haven't been coming to our super secret meetings because I didn't know about them either until recently. I haven't been either. So. <laughs> They've been secret from everybody. That's a pretty good secret. Involved. You got to admit though, if nobody knows about it, that secret. So what do you got to add to this before I switch gears here? What? Me adding to what exactly? Uh, the discussion? You want to jump discussion. into something else because I got to talk about two things. Um, I don't know. Um, I was a vegetarian. You're a vegetarian with a shitty internet connection. <laughs> I was watching what, what because I was refilling the gym. Don't yell at me, please. But you like people yelling at you. That's true. Oh. No, Am I yelling? The, I'm sorry. <laughs> the conversation about the the vegetarianism and well veganism more specifically. But yeah. Um I was a vegetarian for like three years and it is incredibly expensive. So Yeah, I can imagine. And I just I I, I just I, I my I have family members that are like Helios points out he has family members that are vegan. So do mm -hmm. I, and they're very unhealthy looking. I don't know, it just doesn't, oh, look, doesn't look right to me. Yeah. But I mean, oh, yeah, I, vegan, I mean, that. obviously, like Carl, Carl, she obviously gets her nutrients. I mean, so she doesn't look mm -hmm. like one of those anorexic, like protein starved, you know, anemic. Anemic, yeah. They become she's, she's anemic like, if they're diet. Okay, yes, you correct. look healthy. We get it. Sit down. <laughs> yeah. You're going to get her demonetized yeah. doing that. <laughs> I like that view. I like that. I like it. Yeah. Like, I legitimately like had to stop. 
being a vegetarian specifically because they couldn't afford it and it broke it's my expensive. heart. Yeah, organic. Uh, like for example, there's certain things that I do like organic. Like organic milk, I oh, find yeah. to be really good. Yeah. Um. Uh, See, and but other ones, I I, mean, I think it's too much, too expensive for the difference. Like like organic eggs that's... versus regular eggs, I don't notice much difference. Yeah. I think it's really important. That's actually a very important conversation to have. Is the cost of it? Mm. I my best friend, she's she lives off minimum wage, and she's vegan. Um, I don't know how she does it. She's oh. amazing. She actually went vegan way before me. Um, but the core bits of like a plant whole foods plant based. Um, diet is things like potatoes mm. and um these the rice and you can get bulk um vegetables and things for really cheap um that's frozen um that is just as fresh because they're frozen immediately and so there there are ways yeah, to do frozen. it yeah they're flash frozen um so there's ways to do mm. it um, where you can add all of these elements in. I will say, if you are not someone who um, is into like meal prepping and um, wants a lot of like quick things, you do have to do a little bit of research to try to figure out what works for you. Um, but it is totally doable. But I've heard it from a lot of people, especially when they're new to veganism. And even years back, there was not as much as there is now, and we're seeing a lot of the prices go down. Uh, so I would recommend staying away from a lot of the faux meats and things like that. I mean, they're good for every once in a while. Like for the July, we had a barbecue, mm -hmm. we had black bean burgers, meatless burgers, brats, and we had baked beans, you know? So we had a bunch of different things, but we don't have it every day and so i i do think that the cost is is very important but it's also important that um it's it depend it depends on what you buy well there's and, also a market i mean somebody point out there's a marketing scam too i mean like what the hell is organic water water is inorganic because it doesn't have carbon in it. Yeah. Or, organic can mean <laughs> so many different things right organic can mean without carbon Absolutely. or organic can mean without certain kinds of pesticides there's no one established use of it um you know so when you hear things like you know organic water is like what is that or or my favorite diet water mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um I yeah, there's a lot there's a lot of things that are misnomers and you have to kind of learn to read labels a lot. Mm. Like it was very interesting the biggest learning curve I had because I was a meat and potatoes girl. I mean, I'm telling you I every single one of my meat uh, one of my meals had at least one meat item. And so transitioning into veganism, I had such a big, like, um, uphill learning scale. And uh, one of the things that I had to learn was mm -hmm. what can I actually eat? And going into the stores and seeing by looking at the labels and seeing that milk gets hidden in so many things. It's ridiculous. <laughs> All right, Golda, hang on. Golda's got to take off, uh, but hang on. Before she takes off, uh, I do got to switch gears because it applies to her. Yeah. So before you leave, uh, Manya, I am going to be talking about the GoFundMe here and appreciative of all the people that donated to it. You were one of the largest ones. Don't ever do it again. I will hunt you down and slap you. Um, <laughs> but I do Thank appreciate very it very much. You know, you might uh, want to slap me? You want to slap me? Well, yeah, but you're, really? yeah, you're looking you forward to that, me, I know. Like... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do you have to deal with I'm, I'm harassed. I, I'm, I'm literally harassed. It's okay with this. <laughs> Um, but I wanted to thank you, Mania, for your generosity, and I know you've been a huge support to the channel. And uh, thank you before you leave. But I'm gonna, if you're gonna leave, I'll get Steve back in here. Um, but I want yeah. to thank you. I love you. you know, I, I love you too. I love Landon. I love everyone. I love. Thank you very much. Good, everyone, it's good, yeah. good to talk to you again. Bye -bye. Thanks for stopping by. I'm ciao, ciao, ciao. Night. I never yeah. speak to you, Manya, ever. Oh, so, and Manya, so be, nice before, before you leave, because I'll ask the other people in here, because a few of them are ah. in here. You, you've seen receipts, right? Oh, yes, okay. I did. Whoever says there were no receipts, like, fuck off. <laughs> I love you. Amen. <laughs> Bye, Manya. All right, so, so on that, on that uh, vein right there, um, I have all the receipts, and I'm not going to make them public because 
Why? I mean, if people want, I, I, just, I love, I, the narratives people are spinning are just incredible. The people that I care about, the people that have been giving to my GoFundMe, my Patreons, all they have to do is ask me for it. They've seen it. Landon, um, have, how much, how much did, in receipts did I show you um, math-wise? You did the numbers. You crunched the numbers. I mean, I think, I think it was 20, was not, was it not 2,600? 3,600. 3600 3600 2600 plus 300 plus yeah, 800. Yeah, yeah, 3600 3600 $3,600. All right, so I showed receipts for my legal things, and I showed, you know, the, the loss of revenue. $3,600. $3,600. Uh, right. Yeah. Um, and, how, and my GoFundMe made $3,600, $3, which, by the way, all I said, oh, I wanted to break even, and I did. I had didn't even have Red's rhetoric promoted. He, had, he was like, look, I'll promote the hell out of your fundraiser. I asked him not to. I only wanted to break even. Right? I'm not here to make a profit, um, but I was out, I basically was out of pocket $3,600 due to lost revenue and what I spent for legal fees, um, which I have the receipts for. Um, Carl, you saw them. I, and I, I saw did. them too. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so yep. uh, the math checks out. The math checks and out. I'm not good at math. I mean, 3,600 minus 3,600 is zero. You don't mm -hmm. have to believe Apparently. it. It's a fact. Yeah. 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 It's just kind of you know. And so, uh, but yeah. I am like, I am leaving my GoFundMe up there because there will be future stuff and if people want to like donate because. Um, of the fact that again, I, I I have to get back in the algorithm. It's going to take me a while to get back where I was. So I still have loss of revenue. So if people want to donate to my GoFundMe, it's going to be left up there until I reach the goal. But no obligation to. I've already made, I've already recouped my losses. So that's all I asked for, and I, I managed to. But of course, I have the receipts. I'm not an idiot. Um, and if anybody who's given to the GoFundMe or my Patreon wants to message me and hang, go into a hangout like this, so I know who you are, I will show them to you. But the, the, the haters, the trolls, the idiots, let them spin their yarn because all it does is make them look stupid. I, I don't, I, I don't pay attention to it. I don't, I don't watch their shit. I just, honest to God, don't. So I hear about it, and some, I, I get people messaging me all the time. And you know who you are in the live chat. People going, hey, did you hear such and such said this about you? I'm like, okay, they're an idiot. What do you want me to do? I, I mean, I don't care. But one of the funniest things I did here, this, this really was the most dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. That I bought a three thousand dollar laptop with the GoFundMe money, even though wow. again I broke even. <laughs> when first of all, I have somebody in here who actually helped me get, get my computer system. The computer system I'm using now, which is a beast, was helped got by Mr. Lan and Kurt Noel here in Bullinator. They both got and, together. And, a, and, and a another anonymous and a third 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 donor. And all I know about the third party is I'm allowed to say. Like, I don't know who they are, but I am allowed to say per, per Landon's thing is that they do watch my stuff and they're a pretty famous musician. That's all yep. I know about them. But I had another benefactor. That could be anybody. Could be anybody. But I guess they're really well off, and they oh they love science too, so they like my my show. Yes. But yep. they help yep. get together and help fund me get a computer system. I use that computer yeah. system for everything. It is it is a monster? I'm able to run three monitors now because the card is so good. It has no problem. And the two of my monitors are really old. One of them is really small. But my landlord, uh, he he went to a laptop, so he doesn't use his lap his monitor any longer. He gave it to me to use, which I'm sitting over here which uh, I know Cheshire and some other people have seen. And it's, it's, it's a monster, so I can actually see it with my contacts, which is nice. But here's the story. Um, we've had a lot of roommates come and go, and so they leave a lot of stuff behind. And I found a tote, and I know that Cheshire's seen it, and some other people seen it. It's outside my door here. It's, it's a little like a tote, like you, you know, like for shipping stuff. And I found this in it, okay? This is called a uh, mini PC. It is a Intel Cherry Trail Atom Z8350, uh, which came out in, I believe, 2016. It is clearly a used thing, um, but it basically is this. They're worth about, I guess, $100. But it basically is something like this. It has low, um, it's quiet, has low footprint. It's not for gaming at all. It's basically just to get on the internet, which I wanted to, I was setting up an office um, in the living room a little bit so people can get on, on the computer there to stream. Either, well, uh, to, to surf the internet, not necessarily stream, but to surf the internet. And so this is perfect for that, right? Um, and so it's got a, a, v, a VGA output. Um, it does it has HDMI. It has, um, you know, Ethernet cable. And then I found this in the tote too, which is a 64 gigabyte solid state drive. There, and that's it. So I put them together and I'm trying to, to figure out if I can get them to work together. This $100 thing that somebody left behind morphed into a $3,000 laptop. <laughs> that has got me one of the dumbest things I've ever heard in my life. So, whatever. I, I feel I, like if you tried to game this, on that thing, it would turn into, like, molten slag. <laughs> I, th here's the thing. Look, I don't listen to these idiots because why bother? If you want to listen to them, be my guest. 
but they're basically just just tabloid journalists, right? That's all they are, if that. I mean, they're, they're, I wouldn't even call them a journalist. They're just basically right. YouTubers who want to make up shit about other people for drama and get views out of it. And if you're into that, knock yourself out. I, I don't care. I don't watch it. I, and, and, but when you when you when I hear something so damn stupid, it, even I have to comment on it because I don't comment about ninety five percent of it. But that five percent, even I go, God damn, that was just beyond stupid. And it's funny. And so I, I will explain that. I never bought a $3,000 laptop. I, my laptop was bought for 188 bucks. Kyle helped me get it. It's a used, refurbished uh, i5, I believe. And it has um, the, uh, which keys are bad? It's a C, the, the, the e, what is the E, the C, the three key. I don't work on the line. I don't know why. But I have an external keyboard. Um, so that's the story on that. Uh, Gaber, no one is watching. Uh, I don't know if they. I don't know if they watch. I got 102. <laughs> so exactly. I don't know. I don't pay attention who watches the, all these like um, these Plus other troll channels. I mean, look, people talk about me every day on the internet, literally every day. Um, yeah. If they get views, great. But you know what? The people that matter to me aren't them. The people that matter to me are the people that actually watch my stuff and go, "Yeah, this is actually pretty interesting." When we have landed on, we talk about science and math and and philosophy because those other people can't talk about those topics. It's fucking I am their topic. I literally am the discussion <laughs> 24 hours a day for certain people. Without hey, me, I don't know they would survive. And so I'm Steve, thrilled, but as whatever. As interesting as you are, as interesting you are, I think the universe is more interesting. I so agree with you. But broaden their, people should broaden their horizons and talk about something maybe besides Steve. I'm just, just, it's just not going to happen. No, don't take away my well, haters, man. Uh, I have talk a about me. All, hate they've, it. all they've done is solidified my base because you guys know they're full of shit. I mean, they literally make stuff up and go, oh, we don't even care if it's true or not. And they throw it out there. Okay, great. It doesn't matter. I, it doesn't affect me. Well, I have I'll, a different I'll, kind I'll of hater to talk about. Who? Go fund me. Fuck you. Because <laughs> <laughs> I tried to donate to your GoFundMe a significant amount. I tried it dozens of times, never worked. I went down to ten dollars, worked the first time, then never again. It's because you're Australian. I don't know why. Aussie, because because Aussie sucks. Yeah, they hate Australians, they hate, obviously. They hate, they hate so Australia. fuck them. <laughs> fuck GoFundMe. Well, and, and I, I, I apologize. I, for I that. pulled out a, I pulled out a GoFundMe as well. Um, and one of the things I got enraged by is all their horrid captcha stuff, right? Yeah. When I had, Captures. you know, I had a, I had a three cycle thing where I'm basically training someone's. AI bot set of, <laughs> of stuff in order for GoFundMe to say you took too long, try it again and cycle me out, right? And so, and so I tried the the audio thing as well. I mean, and and I just I just don't like you know GoFundMe's uh, you know policies as well as their you know silly stuff of proving you're a bot. And so I I I contacted GoFundMe. They were very polite. I said, hey, you know, you got to think about a different way of of trying to prove someone's human than this. This Captures. Google Captcha stuff, and um, they had a discussion. And I said, "Well, I guess delete my account." And so I, yeah, I mean, well. none of them are perfect. And by the way, um, Raz, I appreciate it. And I, I have my PayPal. By, by anybody who sends me PayPal, they get a message, and I do acknowledge them, just like yeah. do any do any super chat. I get it live. Um, but people people that don't want to do this GoFundMe, they can help PayPal. Um, and I appreciate every dime I get. I'm not going to go through all the names right I mean, now. That can I deposit out. into PayPal without a PayPal account? Yeah, I think the, there's a way that Steve can set up I a, don't know. a, a link I, I don't, for you to I, do that. Um, because much like Facebook, I refuse to use PayPal. I think Cash App would be another alternative. Yeah, I, you might want to look at Cash I App. Really what, don't know. There's a way where uh, Steve could actually send you an invoice, and then that way all you have to do is, is pay you using your, your thing, and then you don't have to sign up for an actual account. Yeah, I might do that in the future. Right. Yeah. Um, uh, Gaber says five dollars. One hundred and two people watching, and yet the chat shares the same avatars of like four. And those four people are cool as shit. Um, I bet ten people, mm -hmm. ten Pepsi are watching, including me. I, I, look, I don't care if one person watches or a thousand people watches. I've had thirteen hundred people watch. I've had five people watch. You know what? It's not about the views with me. It's about the discussion. And uh, yeah. until people understand that, they're, they're not going to get anywhere because I'm not about the nub numbers. I'm about the conversation. This is why people that accuse me of buying subs are so far from removed from reality. And they clearly don't know me because I've been around YouTube for eight years. I don't get, why would I buy subs? That has got to be one of the dumbest narratives I've ever seen in my entire life. But and people buy into it. Amazingly so. enough, they like to say that you don't like to have anybody on here that doesn't agree with you 100%. And look at that. 
we disagree. I, I lo- both people uh, come I'm here a, disagree with me on something. Uh, uh, it's going to be boring if they all agreed. Uh, I'm a theist, and I'm on yeah, theist. Yeah, he's a theist. Right? With me. <laughs> uh, Gabriel right? Chidar is, I mean, boy, Steve. I don't know what that means, but... Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, like you know, he, uh, he actually is a theist. I, I I expect people to be different in their in their in their uh, I would hope so. beliefs and stuff like got, that. That's the whole point of having this channel. Well, what do you got in here? You got atheists, agnostic, anti-theists, and theists. Are we much. missing anything? Um, I, that's almost the gamut, isn't it? Yeah, pretty much. I think so. <laughs> is that that's literally like. The paradigm, right? That's like all four of them. Yeah, I mean, we cover all bases, I guess. Then we just get a polytheist yeah. in here, I guess. But we need to get uh, Ocean in here. Yeah. Well, it's so funny because, again, <laughs> anybody who's followed me for a long time knows my channel thrives on disagreements. Well, right. You know, well, you know Ocean argue. a little. Well, you know argue, Ocean right? a little. Right. Well, see, well, see you, you know Ocean a little longer than I have. Um, would he agree that monolatry is a subset of polytheism? Uh, so you're talking about the belief that one god exists, uh, multiple gods exist, but you only worship one god? In essence, yeah. yeah. Um, I think so. Uh, I think that um, his position is that you can believe one specific god uh, to worship, and then the other gods that exist, hedonism, not hedonism, yeah, you know, hedonism would be a very similar thing to monolatry. How do you how do you pronounce? I call it called mon, monolatry. Henotheism. He, he, he well, henotheism. He yeah, not hedonism. Yeah. Henotheism. Yeah. 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 Yeah, henotheism would be uh, all gods exist, but only one's considered worthy of worship. Well, multiple gods exist, but one's worthy of worship, yeah. Yeah, yeah whereas in monolatry is one god is worthy of worship. Which would be the, the Christian others, gods. While, yeah, while they, other gods do exist, yeah. they're considered evil or not worthy of worship. Yeah, I think Ocean would agree with that, because how do you, I, 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 I say the word differently. Mm-hmm. Monolatry. Mono, monolatry. Monolatry. Is that how you pronounce it? Monolatry? Um, uh, yeah. Because okay. I was reading Marcus Smith's book. Um, I got off track with it. But he, in his book, he he labels it that was the ancient Israelite view. Yeah, I also believes that Christian. Yahweh exists. He's just not the you know the one true God as people think he is. But he, believes, he acknowledges that. that He's a volcano that, God, right? I don't know. Uh, no. I thought he <laughs> was. No, there was there's yeah, was no Aaron Ross like, thing that he said. Aaron Ross says that, but yeah. the uh, fact is that that is a claim that is not based on evidence and it is assumed without reason. Oh, interesting. Hmm. I'll have to look into it then some more. Well, Chris Hansen, uh, he was on Aaron Ross' channel, I think it was about a year and a half, two years ago, and he pointed this out to him that there is no um, archaeological or any source evidence at all from the ancient areas that any ancient Israelite or any ancient per- person or yeah. tribal group believed in a volcano deity. Oh, I mean, interesting. I mean, there, there, are, there are Polynesian deities uh, that, that are volcano-based, but they usually also have other aspects, like Pele, yeah, Pele. is, 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 a, is a lady that, that has some of her aspects. She, her home, according to the Hawaiian mythology, is, is in various volcanoes. But she has other aspects as well. So usually, in a poly- when you have a Polynesian that that has a volcano-based deity, it's a volcanism has to be is part of it, not the volcano itself. Volcano tends to be their their place of of being or their place of power sometimes. Yeah, I don't like, I don't uh, think that whole thing for the volcano god actually made sense to me. Um, I I don't know if enough about it. I knew I know I disagree with the zeitgeist. I know Ocean and I both you know, totally think that those are such bad arguments trying to compare Jesus to Norris and all that kind of stuff. So bad. I mean, ridiculously bad, but... Who, what was the name of the guy that was on with Arn Ra uh, talking about that? I would like to look it up. Uh, Chris Hansen. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Now, but Chris Hansen became a full-on polytheist, and um, he... he I, I don't know why, but but uh, actually, uh, she goes by um, Christy now. Christy? Christy, yeah. Uh, but... Uh, yeah. Oh, that's a Bible expert, right? But uh, yeah, Christy wrote a blog about me, and I have no idea why she came out of nowhere just attacking me. Um, and I have no idea. I've always been kind to her. I've always been nice to her. I've always supported her. But it's just weird that all of a sudden people just change on a dime. And so I don't associate with her, but I don't know what happened there. I really don't. Um, but she goes by Christy now. Oh, okay. Well, in regards to this polytheism, you can thank uh, Ocean for that. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm sure. No, I know there was the, yeah. 
But uh, anyways, back to my uh, the <laughs> GoFundMe real quick. I, I, like I said, I, I don't this. There's 61 donors, and, and I, I'm not going to go through every single name, but I will, you know, point out the fact that I do appreciate every single one of them. I have looked and seen and read all these comments. People are like, take care, you know, good luck. Um, and by the way, a lot of real names as a prize to other GoFundMe's where people use false names, just to uh, again to talk about the non sequitur show updates. Here's, here's some facts, and then we'll move on because I don't want to talk about too long, but people had asked me and they have a right to know. Here's the facts. Somebody stole $60,000. That's without question. That's a fact. That person who stole $60,000 lied about having a lawyer for a very long time, lied about having a CPA, fra- admitted, uh, submitted fraudulent records to the court. These are all facts and evidence. And people still gave him $5,000 to hire a reputable lawyer just to tell him he has to obey the court order. That's in full, in full effect. <laughs> I don't have a problem with that. All right. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, the, because the lawyer has to tell him, you have to obey the court order. The, the court order right now is that he's supposed to turn everything over. He has failed to do so. So right now, the only thing that's on the table, there's two things that are on the table. That, that you, and by the way, this is all public because you can go read the, the, the court case. The two public things that are upstanding right now are, one, he's right now in contempt unless he can show the judge he's not. And there'll be a hearing on that. He has he's a contemptor. The burden's on him to show why he's not in contempt of court, which I'll think he, he can he's gonna fail miserably on. There's only one way he can get out of contempt of court, and that's to obey the court order, and that's to turn everything over to me, which he's failed to do. And that's what his lawyers, I'm sure, told him. The other thing that's on the table is that he's still trying to say that he wasn't served properly, which even if that was the case, which is not, is meaningless, it's not gonna have that much effect. It just goes back to the fact that, you know everything's already in evidence and it's just going to prolong it. That's all it's going to do, but uh, it doesn't change anything of any accord. The reason they have to have a hearing on it is because if they don't have a hearing on that, then he's going to go to the appeals court and think they're trying to say there was some kind of um, judicial um, uh, legal reason for why uh, he, he didn't get a proper um, say and why he thinks that his, his, his service was not proper. And so it's all for the fact that it, it will, it allows for the appellate, Lack of appellate court to say anything was, was wrong. So that's the only reason why he has a hearing for that. But the judge has told him straight out, look, um, you need to convince me of this, if, if, but you haven't, and you need to turn things over because it doesn't full effect. And if you don't, I will up to including incarceration. These are all facts on the table. If people want to give him money for a lawyer to tell him that he's in contempt, which I could have told him free, be my guest. It doesn't change anything. Um, $5,000 is not going to get you very far with this kind of thing. It's just going to get you a retainer. Um, so... Uh, that that that's money well spent there people good job uh, that's all that's I all i can really say on it this is ridiculous the, i haven't really kept up with current events but has carl resurfaced at all or? oh yeah no he's trying to make a comeback i mean again he's hanging out with a, a lot of the people that have just you know shat on people forever and he's doing the same thing he's he's turned into one of those people he used to be about the topics now he's going after people personally Right, he goes after me personally, like who I have on, who I have talked to, who I have, you know, have topics about. He neglects to mention again to people that he stole sixty thousand dollars. Where's the money? Anybody who associates with Kyle, right? You're allowed Show to do so. I don't money. give a damn. But you're associating with somebody who was con- was found liable for fraud, fraudulent conversion, unfair and deceptive trade practices, breach of fiduciary duty, and breach of contract that stole sixty thousand dollars from non sequitur fans. That is without question. That is as Landon would say, a fact. There's yeah. no matter of belief about that. That is a fact. If that's the kind of person you want to associate with, be my guest. You can make a great comeback with those kind of people. Those are the kind of people that I disassociated myself with ages ago for that very reason, because that's the kind of people that they are. I mean, as Cheshire pointed out very astutely, there seems to be a self-fulfilling prophecy. When I block somebody and I stop talking to them and they turn out to be a really shitty person, is it a self-fulfilling prophecy? No, I don't think so. I think it's the fact that I was aware of it and I don't want anything to do with those people. I don't block people because they disagree. I block people because they're just horrible human beings. That's it. And I think a lot of my fans do recognize that now. And they just happen to disagree. Yeah, and sometimes I engage because it's fun to engage with the trolls. Steve's seen some of my conversations with them. And funny enough, none of them have shown me any evidence. Yeah, well, that's a, that's a common thing too, right? Um, I had said on a tweet, look, this is, this is how you know somebody has an adult mind. Uh, or somebody who just has a psychological obsession with me. They say, claim X. You ask for evidence to claim X. They say it's out there. They block you and ridicule you in perpetuity. And that's a common thing. You, uh, most of my audience have had this happen to them. I mean, I've seen it happen, so I know a lot of them have had it happen. I know Rez has happened to you. 
Me? No, it hasn't. Because I don't engage with these people. You, you start. You 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 started to, then you realized I'm not getting it. I watched you on Twitter. You would engage, but then you would just be like, these people are just ridiculous. I, I make the offhand comment on Twitter, but that's about all I do, yeah. and I never receive anything back. Shocker. So. Yeah. I look. That, that, yeah, I mean, I make a. Sometimes I engage with them because I I really honestly want to know. And uh, especially when all the non sex stuff started happening, uh, as I said, I intentionally follow certain people in order for, I want to hear the other voices. I want to hear the other point of views. I want to hear the evidence that they have. Mm -hmm. I'm still waiting for the evidence. Well, you know, and here's like evidence here. Yes, Slam RN, you were the person who told me about the Amazon wish list. I didn't know anything about the Amazon wish list for non sequitur show. Slam RN in the live chat told me about it, and I said, because she said, is this legit? Because, I, you know, we had a lot of people trying to parry at us. And um, she said, is this legit? Because I want to be to get yourself and go, I, and I told her, I know nothing about this. Kyle was not a friend about a lot of things. And he, and he got a lot of, he, he, this is why his estimates are extremely low. He got a lot of stuff free from people that have bought stuff for the show that he stole. That would be considered to be assets to the business. Straight up. I know for a fact people got him lighting. People got him software. I think uh, uh, there might have been a computer involved. Um... I have some of the receipts. I know somebody definitely got him a very expensive lighting system. So, but yes, Slam RM, that is true. You were the person who told me that Kyle had an Amazon wish list because I didn't know about it. But again, these are the people that he's associating with. Cancerous, dishonest people tend to associate with each other. Let them. It keeps them away from me That's, and us. That's mm -hmm. I, I don't give a shit what they do on their own channel. They can say whatever they want. All it does is show to the people that have been around my channel how disreputable they are, how dishonest they are. When a person steals $60,000 and you're propping him up to be the good guy, okay, that's where your morals can, are at, knock I, yourself out. Can I ask a question to the room, just sort of a generalism? Mm -hmm. what, what would you, your guess be as to like the fan split between supporting Steve and supporting Kyle and supporting neither? Just oh. a straight up guess a percentage. Of the fans? 95% supported me. Now that's dwindled a little bit, but uh, I mean, still think it's pretty high. So I would have guessed like 85, 10, 5. Well, it might be down about 85 now. I mean, there are some people that for some reason still think Kyle did no wrong, which is, out uh, by the way, I can tell you this for a fact. I have evidence I've never shown publicly to anybody. Publicly. I and mean, there have been people in private that have shown. But publicly, I've not shown it. I've kept it for a very specific reason, for legal reasons. And I have all the evidence that it's 50 50. And I, I know, uh, well, Monty's no longer here. She's seen it. I'm not sure if Landon's seen it, um, but it, it doesn't matter. I don't care if people seen it or not. I know it exists. My lawyer knows it exists. The rest, pff, it'll come out eventually, and I will show it all publicly. But Kyle knows it exists too. This is why he doesn't argue. To the, he didn't argue it wasn't 50-50. There's a reason for that. He knows it was 50-50. He even said in the letter, hey, you know, I want to retain 50-50 partnerships. So there's no, no, the only people that are arguing wasn't 50-50 are those who are just making stuff up, right? Because even Kyle knows this. He never even argued that it wasn't. Um, Gabe, $5. Just make up evidence as you go how Kyle thinks, exactly. Yeah. But that's okay. That's just what they do. Kyle turned into what he despised. Straight up. He turned into the, the, the actual kind of person that he hated to, to be, that he may have used to be and went back to it. I don't know. But the fact remains is I've been honest from day one. I've had it all been transparent from day one. Everything I've had... Um, put out there i stand by nothing my story has not changed in anything the only thing is is like i said i found some stuff a little bit later after the the, the fact that i that i was, was searching for stuff for the lawyer that again our discussions about 50 50 they do exist and so when you have a verbal agreement when you have them substantiated by written discussions called a written agreement not a contract i didn't have a written contract but if we had a written agreement that's perfectly fine for a verbal agreement this is how most things mm -hmm. are done my lawyer said that's completely yep. normal. So Kyle knows we had we had a verbal agreement and a written agreement, not a contract. Again, not the same thing. But he knows this. That's why he, when he when he tried to defi defend uh, in that letter, he never said that we didn't. And he knows that. And he also knows that the the fraud allegations, the medical allegations, the pain on the table, that was all BS. He knows that. He never tried to to, to promote that narrative to the judge either, because that was all made up. But people want to buy into it. Be my guest. But you know what? The law is the law. And the law is, is that he is liable for stealing that money. And whether it goes to criminality or not, that's a different thing. He already, he already perjured himself. That's a fact. Again, fact. Not a matter of belief. He perjured himself by DMCAing me four times, three of which are on account that I own. 
that was perjury. Whether you know you whether you say, well, the judge didn't call perjury yet. Okay, fine. And illegally, he has not been convicted of perjury. But when you lie under oath, that is what perjury is. And he lied under oath. Is I own those copyrights. Matter of fact, even on the overlays, it says non sequitur show on them because we're promoting a non sequitur show. And I, a fan, fact, own those copyrights, right? So anytime he's saying that he, he DMCA'd, um, he's lying. He's a strip lying. And, and we know this. Anybody who has a, 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 even a modicum of sense knows this. But the people that try to promote the, the narrative that, hey, look, it was his copyright, they don't care about the truth. They don't care about the facts. This is why I don't have them around any longer. This is why I block those people. This is why I don't associate with those people. That's it. It's, it does, it's, not, it's not that more complicated than that. If people want to, you can. But I don't. And there's, no, but there's a reason for it, obviously. Residence since five dollars. Kyle thinks. <laughs> oh, that's weird being in the call while you're reading my super chat. I didn't even think about that. <laughs> yeah, you actually say it, but I appreciate that's it. That's odd. <laughs> oh, you should have had Res read his own. <laughs> that, no, Inception. that didn't even occur to me. I put that super chat in like two seconds flat right after that previous one. <laughs> So, 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 I mean, am I off base here? I mean, are any of my facts not facts, Landon? Yeah, it, 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 it's, it's pretty straightforward uh, factual data. And, and also, some of the things you're talking about are what's called legal facts, right? Mm -hmm. That the court has established as fact. Yep, they when are the legal court facts. makes declarations, it's not a matter of opinion. The court has determined a legal fact. He, he, right? he, was, he was found liable for fraud. He took $60,000. Period. And then he's scamming for another five thousand, which I think is again hilarious. Be my guest, give him money. Um, but it doesn't like you change said, that, anything. That five thousand dollars is not going to make a damn difference. No, not at all. It's a waste. Those people are just waste. wasting their money. The, the lawyer he hired, we know who she is, and she has an ethical she, duty and responsibility to obey the court order. She can't just say, "Hey, Kyle, you can't." You, the judge says this, you can't do it. That would get her disbarred. She's not going to lie for Kyle, and Kyle has two things. He can lie to her, and we can show that he's lying, or he can actually do the right thing and not be held in contempt, because right now, he is in contempt, and he will be held in contempt um, at the court hearing, which will happen. Now, she could represent him at the court hearing, which I think why she... He, I think the main reason why he hired a lawyer, because he needs legal representation to stay out of jail. That's my personal belief. Could be right or wrong, but it seems to be the most rational um, belief. Again, that is my opinion, though. I cannot emphasize enough that's not a fact obviously okay that's that's when you differentiate between an informed opinion and a fact right when in the chat said do another go fraud me then yeah well again we already um, discussed that i i will have as many gofundmes <laughs> as i need if i as anybody else was i've helped with <clears throat> gofundmes this is the only gofundme that i've ever done and all i did was broke e broke even and I, I didn't profit and I'd even have Reds help me on it, which I could have, because I could have, I could have doubled my my thing if I would have had Reds group help out. But I didn't think that I needed it. Right? I'm not here to to profit off stuff from a GoFundMe. I wanted restitution for what I was out of pocket, and the the community helped me with that. Like I've helped the community. Um, but yeah, people want to. The, the, they, there's these narratives out there that I have all these other GoFundMe's that I did with, like Sean and Reds. I had nothing to do with any of those. People know this. But hey, you know what? A good story. I've seen right? you promote some here and there, but that's. I pro yeah, I've helped promote that. Say, like, when you, people are in need, like, and I give it to them too. Them. Yeah. Friend, friends support friends. I mean, what community is like? And you know what's so. funny is those people don't have a community like this. They'd rather give money to somebody who stole sixty thousand dollars. That's where their ethical things are. Okay. But I will. Yeah. I could. I give money when the people need it. Absolutely, and I support them. And we promote channels, and we're going to be promoting uh, channels when we when we when we can. Um, right now, I have to promote uh, <laughs> Agree to Argue because I think that's going to be a really cool show. But if people have other shows, we're going to promote them. Absolutely. I'm really excited about that, Steve. It looks really awesome, and that trailer that you guys did looks great. Thank you. I didn't do the trailer. That is a channel owned by Reasons to Believe. They do all the graphics and. Um, it's fantastic. Yep. It's going to be a it's good really show, exciting, though. Well, because we're going to be focusing on the topics, not the, the people. And so that was Great. kind of the, the thing that I said. For, I don't know if you read my blog. I have a new blog post out. I should have put it in the video description. I'll add it later. You should, yes. Please do. But um, my, my blog has been getting a couple thousand views. It's pretty impressive. Um, but 
the last one I did was basically on what the show's kind of about, why we're doing it, and to show that you can have conversations where you don't have to agree with the person and still have civil discourse, which has been the whole basis for the Great Debate community from day one, right? At least my version of it. Um, which, by the way, no, I didn't steal the Great Debate community. If you still believe that, <laughs> go away. I mean, you're just, you're just an idiot. I mean, in fact, you know what's idiot. funny is I actually found DMs recently, I mean, and I won't say with whom, but I actually found me talking to somebody who's been, that, you, that years ago is now accusing me of stealing the, D, of the GAC, DDC, yet here's my conversation with them showing that it was completely the opposite. And so I, eventually I might release those. I have a thing with DMs. I don't like releasing DMs. However, if somebody releases mine, then I, I'm much more likely to release them. But I, I don't release DMs if people don't release mine. And they should, I, it doesn't matter. If I, I, like Kyle released private stuff, so I released. But if, if Cora and I st- like started hating each other, if she never released my DMs, I'm not going to release hers publicly. It doesn't matter. It's just I have what's called ethics. I know, it's weird. Wow. I mean, the GDC I mean... Discord is pretty... Um pretty dead as of late there's not a lot of stuff happening in there anyway yeah at least from what i've seen well i mean i i just haven't promoted it that much right i was i was busy with other stuff like not sequitur show um i have the great to be community channel which i don't use that often and i also have the great to be community on facebook which is actually pretty active um that's where most people go to have these conversations is that facebook i don't use discord i even have the gdc discord i tried it with the gdc channel i'm not a fan of it you know but um, yeah, I mean, well, the, the eventually, I mean, like the like the caffeine corner um, and, and over and under, they're kind of brought to you by the GDC. So you don't have a Steve McRae Discord or like platform other than YouTube, do you? I have the Great Debate Community Discord. Well, right, but I mean, you don't have like um, a specifically Steve McRae no. Discord. No. no. Everything, well, almost I mean, everything I have is under my name. This is so funny. People accuse yeah. me of being sock accounts that I don't own. I only have like I have legit <laughs> one Reddit account. It's under my name, Stephen Cray. That's it. I'm one zero zero other ones. I have no socks. I have nothing. Um, and Twitter, I have like four, and two of them are channel related. And then I have my main, and I have a fun one, but that I don't. I haven't even tweeted on in like probably five months. Um, I did get accused of being a sock account at one point. And I'm like, dude, I go. I don't back have them. Fucking years, and I'm too fucking lazy to do sock account bullshit. <laughs> the only sock accounts I have, and I've mentioned this a million times, bothered. I have sock accounts <laughs> from YouTube because Flat Earthers kept blocking me. But almost every single, uh, le- legit, almost every single one I have has my name in it. That's how you recognize it's me. There's minor <laughs> exceptions like Dossastic Dialectics, um, STD Kane, uh, but other than that, almost all of them I think have my name in it, so you can recognize it's me. I'm not trying to hide. But uh, yeah, but that's the, that's the that's see the there's a there's a thing out there where it's easy really easy to throw accusations out there that are unfalsifiable, right? We see it with young Earth creationists, we see it with flat earthers, we also see it with people that do it all the time. Hey, Carl, you hate you hate animals, don't you? What's that? You hate animals. I eat animals. No, you hate animals. I don't understand what you're saying you at all. You hate animals. No. Yes, you do. You're wrong. You're just wrong. You hate animals. Oh, oh okay. Yeah, see, I mean, I can, you can run any argument that's, that's you want. That's the way it works. That's the way it works. Right. <laughs> Listen fact... to her. She's, she's lying to you because she hate animals. She actually hates animals. Oh, and, and, and they'll say uh, because you denied it, that means it's true. Right. Oh, oh, but of course it is. See, if you really didn't uh, dislike animals, you would admit that you dislike animals. And since you don't dis- <laughs> so you don't admit it, you must dislike animals. That's Animal exactly hater. exactly what that means. So now we're going to all start a campaign for the next five years <laughs> to troll Coral on the fact she hates animals. Coral hates animals. Hashtag. Yes. And that, that, there's your, your uh, audio. Yep. Bunnies, so bunnies especially. You hate them, bunnies. <laughs> <laughs> she hates wabbits. wabbits. Fluffy bunnies. Waskily wabbit. Yeah. I just got rid of a little one that was uh, staying at our house for boarding. Oh, it was just the cutest little Netherland dwarf. It was so cute. It was so hard to let it go. I don't know what Gabe's asking. Rabbits oh. are just super gentle. They're such great pets. Oh, just like you have like, low energy. What is Gabe like asking? Very relaxing chat? pet. Do, 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 I don't yeah. understand that, that super chat other. Um... All right. Can can you can you do another super chat and explain? Well, yeah, and, yeah, super chat, just type it. Super, there was a. There was oh, that's right. I kick puppies. Yeah, hashtag did. kick puppies. Um, right. Want to see somebody's channel burned? 
and then oh, he I said see. a no, comment I, here's about. The thing. I can tell. I can tell you this. I can talk person. about anybody I want, and I can fact check anybody I want. Uh, I'm not going to, because again, I have legal stuff that I'm going to be doing, um, and my lawyer has given me very specific instructions, and I'm going to buy to them by the letter. By the letter, and that's the only reason why I can tell you right now. I can fact check anybody I want. There's nothing precluding me from doing that. No, no ramifications whatsoever. If somebody says something and I think it's wrong, I have a First Amendment right to say this is what the person said. This is what's wrong about it. Nothing can change that. Nothing has changed about that. But again, I have very specific strategy that I'm doing that nobody knows about besides me and my lawyer, and it's going to stay that way. This is why if you ask Reds or Cheshire or uh, even Landon or anybody else, not a single solitary person on this planet knows my legal strategy beyond me and my lawyer, not even Ruhif. That's it. And that's the way it should stay. And that's the way it's going until to stay. You're, because you're, I'm, you're, I'm, I'm going to do some very cool stuff, hopefully. Um, and we don't and need so, to say their names in order to promote their channels because they're not worth our time. So uh, unless you're my lawyer... Forget it. You're not. You're, you're, nobody knows about it. And this is what's so funny. It's that client privilege. I, I love. Privilege. I love it though, because again, when I told Cheshire Reds and Bull, hey, look, I this. I, I'm not going to tell you my legal strategy. It's not because I don't trust you. It is because I want you to be able to say Steve hasn't told me fuck all. Steve has not told me their legal strategy, and they can mean oh. it because I would never ask anybody to lie for me, and they can actually say it, and they're telling the truth. Matter of fact, uh, Nicole, I mean, Nikki, I love you to death. Have I told you my legal strategy? <laughs> Me? Nope. Yeah. No. Okay. Landon, have I told you my legal strategy? No, I, I don't know what your legal strategy is. Nobody and I'm not my interested. Lawyer does. So anybody who says otherwise, and anybody who says that they know what's going on, they're lying to you. About or, my they're legal they're your, or they're their they're they're lawyer or they're you. Oh, that's fine. But my lawyer's not going to say anything. But yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm, also I, getting a, I'm also looking oh, at a third apparently... one, so. One thing apparently... I am curious about. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I was just going to say, though, apparently the last super chat is um, because you won't say their name. Oh, I got so exactly what I wanted. And it has nothing to do with that. I am legit following my lawyer's instructions. That's it. Period. That's it. Oh. If people can't oh, accept is, that, is, tough shit. <laughs> I mean, that's exit. So is this, is this Gates Miss trying to get you to say things that you're not going to say? Well, I, 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 why don't you, why don't you? Do another super chat and explain yourself. Yeah, don't bother. No, I don't spend, want, their, spend, I don't want the spend another two dollars and explain yourself. Money, so we can, yes. cause, cause I, I don't understand. So you can, you can, you can spend another two dollars. I, I, I just think it's hilarious uh, because again, I mean, like, uh, I, I love how people. Here's the thing: is there's been people, like, there's been people around that when they don't have the facts or they don't have the information, they legit fill in the blanks with bullshit. And I've been enjoying just listening to that. Going when people send me the clips, because again, I don't watch their stuff, but. People in the live chat know who you are that's been sending me stuff. Um, and they go, hey, did you hear this? I'm like, oh, my God. Yeah. All right, but anyways, I'm... All right, can we not address yeah, that not, person's yeah, so... chat anymore? Because they're not getting it. Yeah, but thanks for the money. Um, I, I will well, take the one money. One thing... But... Ooh, that one was I, I was curious yeah. whether or not you could talk about what happened to the DMCAs yes. that you received. Because obviously you're able to stream again now. So I'm... Just yeah. curious if you can talk and about that. And by the way, just to show you that I'm not in for the money, uh, that person gets hidden as well. I don't want your money. Um, I, again, I don't do this for the money, I assure you. I lived on $400 a month for the longest time. I made about $4,000 in, in 2018. And by the way, I, people have brought up a video that I made years ago that I didn't pay taxes for two years. Um, dumbass, <laughs> the people that are making that narrative, I didn't have a job for two years. I had no income, zero. I literally sold my house. I quit my job to be my daughter. Anybody who's followed my channel knows that story. For two years, I had zero income. By the way, you don't need to file taxes if you have less than I think six hundred dollars, um, and I made zero. I wasn't even I wasn't even uh, making any money off YouTube. I I wasn't even monetized the time. That's why I didn't pay taxes. Very simple reason. You don't have to be a tax attorney to to figure that out. I pay pay my taxes now on time. As a matter of fact, real funny is I just found That's out I was actually involved. Happen. I'm actually involved now in a class action lawsuit against um, is either Intuit or TurboTax. Because I've, I've used both of the years. But what happened was Intuit or TurboTax, one of them misled people to that you had to upgrade. Usually you have that free service, but they've been fraud fraudulently yeah. trying to get people to upgrade. Like I had to upgrade because I have a 1040 um, form, not an easy any longer. I have to I have a 1099 from Google, and so I have to use the, the, the higher package, which costs a little bit more to file. But there, there's certain things that you didn't have to upgrade with, and I guess I'm in that class asking lawsuit. I don't know if other people are. But yeah, I live on very low money for a long time um, because I, I one I had my savings, 
But two, I didn't make that much. I don't do this for the money. I do this for the fact that I enjoy it, and if people want to, to, to contribute and be a part of, the, of it, I, I'm thrilled to death, and I thank every single one of them from the bottom of my heart. I really do thank my supporters. Um, it means more to me than you know, but I'm a very frugal person. I'm not getting rich off this. Um, I showed Landon how much I made last month off my AdSense and my Google and all that stuff, um, and I showed Coral the receipts. It's well, not who, like it's... Isn't ad, I, I'm not AdSense making a hell is in of the money. toilet at the moment, isn't it? AdSense, oh, oh my god. Um, is it a light next to non-existent? Do you know why people didn't care if, if a lot of people didn't care if their, if their money's, if their videos got demonetized? Because when they did, they lost about a dollar. You know, it's very low. I mean, if, if you get if you get 10,000 views, you might make a couple bucks out of it. Now, some people that have got 100,000 views, they might make, you know, 50 bucks or something off of it. But uh, most people like me who only get 1,000, 2,000 per view or per video, that's only going to be about a dollar or so, two dollars. It's not that much. So. So you could get something off the dollar menu at Taco Bell, maybe. But anyways, uh, that's where we stand on that. So the DMCA's, yeah. So the DMCA's, um, I own the non sequitur show channel now, legally, right? But the the person who has the primary ownership right now has not given it back to me. Has tried to DMCA me fraudulently. And committed perjury by doing so. We've already submitted that to the judge. The judge will we evaluate that when we have the hearing. That's a fact. Again, a legal fact. Uh, how does he miss that his email address was in that? I mean. Oh, I don't think he cared. I don't think he cared. But I mean, I, I should well, I should say it's a legal fact because the judge had to rule on it. Yes. So let me walk that back. Somebody will find this and go, look, Steve said it was legal fact when it's not. Okay, fine. Uh, I'll walk that back. Um, it, it is a fact that you have to say that this is your property when you submit a DMCA or it's perjury. The fact remains that's my channel, therefore it's not his property. The fact remains that all assets of the, of the, of the non sequitur show are mine. So the fact remains that he was wrong on that. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about that. That is a legal fact. Would you guys agree? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Very much. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, I mean, legal, yeah, so I should say, legal. like Chester says, I've always owned uh, the non sequitur show, or at least 50% of it. Now I own 100%, and no, it's not 50-50 from now on. The ju we've already ruled on that. We have to do a, a formal thing, but the judge has said, look, you've Kyle's got his money. He stole 60000 He doesn't get anything else from the channel. He's done. And by the way, how, how, do, how do these people justify him stealing $60,000? I've never heard anybody justify it. Not one. Does anybody, because I can't. Because again, I don't watch their stuff. You guys do for some reason. Knock yourself out. But have you guys ever heard any of these people that are supporting Kyle justify how he literally stole sixty thousand dollars, and they think that's moral? I think that a lot of the arguments that I've seen have been that he still has it and that it's over and that. Then why do you need a fundraiser? Out. Right. Well, maybe because that would you would. He has to set it aside in order to wait until the judge figures out and then... Well, if that's the case, then where are the bank records? Because he never submitted the bank records as we asked. That's part of the legal things is that he, he said he was going to actually submit his IRS forms. He admitted that on, on, on YouTube. He didn't. Um, we, we, could, we will subpoena all, those, all that eventually, but um, yeah, I mean, yeah. it's just... I'm just saying that's the argument I've heard. Uh, that's not an Maybe argument. Maybe he spent though. it on dozens of $400 suits. Yeah. Oh. Well, Steve. Well, <laughs> well, Steve. Were most of these people people you've uh, pissed off over oh, the yeah, years? Oh all, so. all, 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 all the all the people that are supporting Kyle are basically the Steve haters. Yeah, the toxic fan. That's it. That well, doesn't that explain explains it. All. it. Yeah, the crazies. Uh, yeah. Maybe not all of them, but the, the vast, vast majority, majority of them. Yeah, I got a huge toxic fandom, and they propelled me to new heights. Um, and I appreciate that because they've just <laughs> talked about me twenty four seven. And I don't. And here's the thing, I legit don't care. I really, honest to God, don't because it hasn't affected me. I still have my 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 fan base. I still have my subs. I still have reputable PhDs that talk to me, and I still have people that I have intelligent discussions with, like Landon. If they want to waste their the rest of their lives obsessing about me, okay, whatever. There is a question. Keeps them away just from other people. That's fine, you know. There's a question. Just to clarify, Steve, wasn't it 20k by his quote figures, and the 60k was from the judgment awarding treble damages? No, 
the 60k is from his own he he actually admitted that he the monies that was earned was around 60k because you got to remember he also stopped at Jan, june 11th on his when he submitted so there's also an entire year of income and plus there's revenue afterwards all in all the channel made about sixty thousand, give or take he already admitted this on air um the trouble damages is is i'm i'm owed half of it 30,000 times three is 90,000. Plus, we haven't got a ruling yet for the legal fees, but I think that's almost a given at this point. Yeah. That sounds right. Yeah. But I mean, when, when the judge rules on these things, they're gonna have to take into account the fact that he did fraudulently try to DMCA me. That was harassment. There were sanctions to be involved. Um, that's why I think he got a lawyer. Because I mean, what he did was, was basically just, uh, he not just uh, he, the thing is he not just neg ignored the court order and the judge he spat in the face of the judge so to speak yeah so yes it's so a probably a wise move you're getting a, a getting a lawyer but from what I understand it actually ended up helping us so we'll we'll, we'll see I don't know if that's again I, I can't demonstrate that that's okay. what I've been told um, and he we'll go waited long enough. Ugh. But that's the that's the yeah. non-sequent show updates but again. Look, if people want to promote Kyle and they and he and he wants to make a go at it again and uh, again, it shows it, it does me a favor. It filters out the people that I don't want to associate with, right? That's it. And, and by the way, I'm not saying Separating you don't have to. Separating the weight from the chaff. Even even uh, even like Cheshire, her block list is not the same as mine. I've subscribed to her block list because I want to see who's on it, but I don't use it as she blocks who she wants to block. I block who I want to block. I sub to Cheshire's Twitter block list because, again, I'm fucking lazy. I can't be bothered blocking all these people individually. It just takes time. That. I got to tell you, there's She's a, there's the a reason why me. most of the people are on the list. Now, I, <laughs> some of them, I, I whatever, she has her reasons. But, I mean, she has people blocked that I don't and vice versa. But but the vast majority of people we block at the same time, like Reds is blocked, Bullinator is blocked, um, th there's reasons for it. I mean, these are just really shitty human beings. <sighs> oh, my new favorite person in chat. Puny cock. <laughs> he's, he's got a new channel soon. He's got a new channel soon. Um, uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know if you guys uh, have seen Puny Cock's new channel, but I guess he's formulating a new channel. I, I don't know. Oh. Knock, knock yourself out. Doesn't he already have like three? No, no. Puny Cock is somebody who's basically taking, I guess, what Jason has talked about and, and just proving it or stuff. I'm like, I'm like, that's a hell of a challenge. Hey, puny cock, you set the bar really low on that because that's not that difficult to do, but you know, whatever. Mm. Debunking. Yeah, debunk debunking Jason is kind of like breathing. It's just like... <laughs> Who's Jason? Oh, uh, I, th I thought... Yeah, I thought I you were talking, talking about Uni Rock, Rock, Rock my channel because there's no reason to. I don't bring him up. Yeah. I, I, that's so funny because I've only mentioned him on my, my, my title bar, my, my YouTube video title. Back in January, I haven't mentioned him since. He's made, I guess he's made like a thousand videos on me on two different channels or whatever it was. I mean, I've wallet, but it's, I probably would guess at least a hundred videos for the last six months. Would you agree? Or several, several dozens? A lot. That's pretty obsessive. Up. But I, hey, I think that's, I'm that's your stick. Them, and yeah, a lot of. I would say the majority of them are. Well, I'm flattered. I'm flattered. I, I don't like. I said I don't talk about him on my channel because I just don't care to. But if Punicock wants to on his, I'll probably watch. Um, but it just, it's not worth my time. I, I look, we've been here for uh, a couple hours now. We've had a great discussion on climate change, yeah. on veganism. You know, we talk about science, we talk about philosophy. These are the conversations veganism. we have. Um, I don't have to talk about somebody for eight hours at a time, seven days a week. Um, uh, that's obsessive. Um, but knock yourself out, man. I'm well, thrilled. I'm thrilled. Thing, I mean that though. much to them. And by the way, the easiest what, subject. but was I right though? When I block somebody, I say, look, you're, you're, you're somebody I don't want to associate with because you're just not an honest person. Almost always I'm proven to be right on this. Like, legit, they get obsessed. I don't know. I, it's a weird phenomenon. It's a very divisive world we're living in right now, and internet culture um, has a lot of bandwagon jumping sometimes, and so... I get that, and yeah. I, it's part of the uh, YouTube phenomenon. But, like, for yep. example, like, Landon. Landon's not a shitty person. If for some reason Landon and I um, just never wanted to hang out together, we would never, I would never, ever, 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 ever and I'll say this publicly, ever, ever say a negative thing about Landon. <laughs> I mean, oh, just, that's just, very kind of Yeah, I mean, it's just... Well, I mean, 
Landon is an awesome person, but for the last 20 minutes, he's been a very bored person. Yeah, he doesn't like these types of discussions. I know. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't really have any discussion. I think that is a discussion. So. But, you know, there's, there's a... There's a well, bunch of stuff no, happening with Steve, space he goes mission. He through this every fucking stream. 20 to 30 minutes of the same shit. <laughs> no offense, yes. Steve. <laughs> yes, it is. Well, I mean, I, it, I, these are my I, updates, I, right? I, I, I mean, agree I, with I got, you on, on that. I got, so. I got an update. It's been a month, but then we can go back to our normal programming again. Caffeine yeah, corner, I'm, I'm going to give you some slack because you've been away for a while. <laughs> Thank yes. you. You're too kind. <laughs> <laughs> right, I got to look what I'm looking at here. Uh, Go ahead, talk about yourselves. No, I was just going to say that's one of the main reasons why I, I, I like coming on here is because you never know what the topic's going to end up being. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's a nice little surprise. We could be talking about math or physics mm -hmm. or astronomy yep. or veganism and climate change and politics. So you just never know. She talks about human veganism opinion. like I talk about atheism. So it's just, oh my God, it's, this is it's awesome. It's literally just, all about human opinion. Yep. That's, yeah. that's part of it. You literally uh, get to hear perspectives from every single walk of life. I got, I got to show you guys something, but you guys won't be able to see it in the internal, but you can see it in the external. So, so one of the things, by the way, I, I want to find out sort of with a new uh, discussion is that we are very near the, um, the possible um, launch date for something called Mars, uh, Mars 2020 rover. And it's a, <laughs> it's a specific Mars, one of the potential journeys to the planet to search for signs of life, collect rock samples, and test a new technique um, you know, producing oxygen from, from Martian atmosphere, which would be quite important. I think the, pro yeah, the, the, problem, there. the problem with Martian is the whole, the whole fact that it has so many perchlorates in it. I mean, the, it will oxidize yeah, but, pretty much but, anything. But, 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 they'll, but they're, so, so, so it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a bio system and a you know, bio search system and a generate actual oxygen from actual Mars atmosphere and also um, another you know, experiment uh, called MOXIE, which is a Mars oxygen uh, research utilization system. And so it's, it's supposed to, to launch somewhere between July 17th and August 5th. That's my cat's name. Um, can, can you guys, can you guys uh, not to interrupt Landon real quick, but can you guys see the outside? Yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, mm -hmm. no, I think, like, okay. I, I, like, I'm, look, I, look, I think we've got to go to Mars. I think that it's, it's inevitable. Um, so any project that gets us there, I mean, it's going to be like incredible. The first man to land on Mars. But anyways, uh, this is actually a drawing from a um, Cheshire. Um, oh, is it SG One? Of course, it's SG One. <laughs> and I, by the way, I love it. I love SG One. SG One. That is the show of all time. It was. It was an amazing show. I didn't get into Universe though that much, but um, I actually liked Universe. I did too. Maybe I'll try watch it again. I no. really like it. It it got cancelled right when it was about to hit its fucking stride too. It really pissed me off. A lot of shows off. do that, right? They get cancelled like right when they're like getting good. Oh, Firefly only got one fucking season because Fox fucked its own fucking programming up. Fuck Fox. Well, man. Okay. Oh. Tell me how you really feel. Are they looking at? Okay, just to kind of backtrack just for a second, I have a question for Landon. Sure. Uh, are they looking at those things in order to? Uh, do like the uh, I forget what it's called, but the geo like changing the, the terraforming. No, not not necessarily. Yeah. That that that's not not for geo forming. But if you wanted to have people um, staying on Mars for long periods of time, they need oxygen to breathe. If you want to have plants there that they're growing, let's say underground, you need okay. to generate oxygen. There is trace of oxygen in the Martin's, Martin's atmosphere. So the question is, well, how how feasible is it to take the oxygen you can find in Mars, Mars atmosphere and and concentrate it to be biologically useful, Earth biologically useful. That makes sense. Um, yeah, somebody and, had asked, and how, how the big thing do about, about Mars sort of, quote, terraforming, um, the reason why Mars doesn't have an atmosphere is because it didn't have the mass to hold on to that atmosphere, right? It, it had it early on in its Probably formation. We had an ocean and so forth. But because Mars is, is so light, has, is, it's, it's not very dense, and it doesn't have much gravity, oxygen and things like that at normal temperatures were able to achieve escape velocity. Temperature is about how fast so it's moving, moving back and forth. Mm -hmm. And so even in Mars's relatively cold atmosphere, things like oxygen and nitrogen um, achieve escape velocity and launch into space. So if you were somehow able to, to do drastic things on Mars to generate a little bit of gas, that gas would leak away and it would 
go. So you're better off trying to be, let's say, underground in chambers mm. and to utilize Mars resources to make a biologically habitable stuff. And you want to have some biosphere there. Again, plants are going to be very important to generate oxygen. And you need and carbon dioxide stuff. You have plenty of that in, in, in there. But you want to build a, a biosphere underground in, in there so that people can survive. Because you can't sit there going back and forth between Earth and Mars, keep yeah. sending bits of oxygen. Titan had asked the same question I kind of asked. How, how do they? How, how do you think they're going to handle the perchlorate toxicity? I don't know. I don't. I'm. I don't know what the what the the mission plan is for for that. There certainly are, you know, for, for people, if people are on Mars or, or, or plants are on Mars, they'll have to be sort of isolated from this environment. I mean, certainly at the surface, uh, because it doesn't have a ozone layer, um, it mm. uh, you, get, you get very direct solar radiation that's quite max, nasty to, to complex chemistry on the surface. So it, it basically gets sterilized on the surface. That's why you want to be underground. Um, so, so that's that's but but again, you have to try to isolate yourself from from the bad stuff and uh, concentrate the good stuff. Is there and this may be a dumb question, but is there a way to make uh, Mars have more gravity? Uh, you'd have to have, have mass, and so you need to you need to slam lots of big things into it, <laughs> pulverize it, uh, kind of, and, kind of... and and then wait till it cools down, right? Kind of, right. That that the 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 heat of accretion. Is going to cause it to be kind of molten for for a while before i got a super chat from um, my math, mathematics friend here uh josh oh. carver uh by the way oh, josh, thank you josh josh was uh, the one that helped me actually meet up with sweet so i appreciate it josh um he says good to see you back steve send my thanks to landon for answering my question about his primer primality test on twitter cheers everyone oh thank you josh what was, I, the, what was I, the primality I, I was test? i was doing this i had this little thing one of these you know what happens to a number of theorists when you're staying at home doing something? And I want to ask the question, how can you form a prime with consecutive, concatenating consecutive odd numbers? Like 13 is one and three, right? That's prime, right? And the question is, well, if you had a five, no, that, that doesn't prime. It was one, three, five, seven prime? Actually, no. But if you keep going, 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 one of the things you find is that if you take the first 34 odd numbers and concatenate together, you get a prime, huh. right? And it turns out that there's one where you take the first 2,000, I think it's 2,570 uh, odd numbers can into there, makes a prime. And the question is, how how often can you find that? And what are the properties of numbers? Oh. And how do you prove it? So I went and proved this number had a property only prime numbers had, and therefore it was prime. I, I, and so it's like, you know, adding, can get any odd numbers together, you get a nice little... Uh, next makes nice little pattern and uh, I got a question just for you. you know, why? I got a question for you. Uh, by the way, Josh, thank you for that fifty dollars. I really appreciate it. Again, uh, Josh, I owe a lot to Josh because if it wasn't for Josh, I probably would never have met um, up with Sweet Eden. Um, so I, I will never forget that from him. Um, and by the way, Sweet is, is sleeping tonight. She couldn't make it. She was dead on her feet. Um, of course, the narrative is like, "Look, Steve, Sweet stood Steve up on the Fourth of July." <laughs> <laughs> um, Oh, it's so She's funny. She's in it's, the uh, other room. You know what's so funny? I literally talked to her like just I mean, like every day. And yet I hear hear these things that it's like, wow. Um what was this? Uh oh yeah, let me uh, so let me ask Landon a question here. I just read something today. There's some student, um, I don't know who he was, but he found out a very simple way to do quadratics um that nobody's ever thought about before for some reason. A really simple way to figure out the roots. Um, have you heard anything about that? You know what I'm talking about? Just I mean, I've, I've, heard of, I've heard of your, there's, there's sort of various techniques that you can do. Um, and and the quadratic formula that most people memorize is not necessarily the, the basic form. There there is there is a there are simpler forms. Yeah, but it works. But use. if you use that if you use that form, you're always gonna get an answer, right? Yeah, and, and there and there are and there are other ways to 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 put that expression that are easier to to, yeah, we need to get solve. Josh in here one of these days, man. We'll have a, a math. Yes. Thing. I like the math. But, thing. You know, it's, it's 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 so it's it's just a different, you know, a different technique for for solving the the quadratic. Um, and you know, it's it's but 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 the standard formula that most people memorize is easy enough for a machine to to do. What I would like is as having 
more efficient ways to do cubics and cortics, third and fourth degree polynomials. Yeah. Because those, if you look at the, the solution of the of the generalized cubic equation or sometimes a fourth degree equation, those are just well. That's why I mean, unbelievably. I, when I took college algebra, I took college algebra as an extension course from Texas A and M, uh, and you start off with the binomials, right? I, I know, again, I've yeah. had math before, so it wasn't like this was anything new to me. But yeah. I did like the way that they actually taught binomial distributions and binomial expansions, and then you start learning the tr the trinary, the you know qu quaternaries, and you learn about the higher the degree. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and so um, there's an there's almost a majestic beauty and symmetry in all these things when you start learning about how these polynomials actually work and how you can find the yeah. real roots and how you do. What, we had to do what's called um, Newtonian. When you'd find if you know the qualitative Newton, analysis, Russian, Russian, yeah, yeah. So yeah. If, it's like if a function is going up, it's increasing, decreasing, all this other stuff, and we did all this qualitative analysis. Um, but it's really a, a fascinating thing when you look at. You start off so simple, right, in a general form, just with something like a parabolic equation. That's just a simple yeah. parabola of x squared. Okay, and then you start adding onto that, you know, a two x, which is a you know uh, obviously linear, and then you add yeah. on a coefficient, and it's a. I don't know. I find it amazing how parabolas change when you start doing this stuff. Yeah. And, and you know, I don't think a lot of people get how I'm elegant sure math is like that. Having those knobs is, is right. That was one of the things that I was very how it fortunate shifts, how it, it to, changes to, to the, make the use of. It's early on using the, the internet called, was that thing called the ARPANET and connecting up to uh, MIT's uh, Maxima machine, which is a list-based thing doing solid symbolic algebra, and taking these equations and doing turning the knobs and seeing what would happen, right? Mm -hmm. So that's when I started seeing these differential equations and started putting numbers in, increasing knobs, and seeing what happened. And you get this, and it, it, it helps you really understand the beauty Absolutely. of these sort of things. You know, my and, first experience and, was, was was programming. Please, was programming, yeah. Landon. Um, when when I, I was learning programming in fifth grade, we started with the TRS-80 kind of system, mm -hmm. uh, but. We learned basic and stuff like that, but I had a my dad had bought a, a Texas Instruments TI nine nine four A for me. Yeah, and even though the, the coding was a little bit different, but I had actually I had written some basic programs where by changing values in math, sine, cosine, everything, I would have these mm -hmm. intricate displays. And one of the yeah. one of the ones I created and it was kind of accidental was I legit made something that looked exactly like you would see for a space-time continuum wormhole. You know, you have the, ah, and it just kind of goes nice. down. And, and, and it was basically just taking line functions and changing the X, Y, um, and doing certain, and I wasn't even great at math. This was like, four, I was 14 or 13, I don't know, I was a year. Well, however old I was. I wasn't great at math, but I understand programming it much. But I didn't have to understand the math. I just knew that if I changed this, this happened. If I produced this line here and I, and I changed it, it, it shifted here, right? It wasn't until later on I realized you know, the more of the intricacies of why it did that, why, why yeah. you, you put a parabola negative, why it does the inflection, why if you shift it by the coefficient, it does this. Um, and so learning Thanks, programming, Richard. I think, really helped Lee learn math later on. Yeah. And, and if you have, you're able, and I always call it experimental mathematics. It's kind of a, it gets some mathematicians upset when I say that, but, but performing experiments and taking knobs of systems and twisting them and seeing what happens, right? When, when you start to, to work with these equations, you get a much more, almost, almost an intuitive feel for what's happening when you're trying to solve some of these, these systems. And, and rather than you could, you know, cause there's systems, but the other hand is that, that not everything has a solution, right? Not every equation is solvable or we know how to solve them. Is, is another set. So so sometimes what you have to do is just numerically approximate it, right? So if you want to know, you know, when you know when does a particular equation um, at its maximum or minimum or relative minimum, zero, relative maximum. Sometimes the only way you can do is numerically keep solving it and try to walk walk along until you find a solution. And even that sometimes doesn't we used really, a, really help. Was you. it the mean volume theorem or the, the squeeze yeah. theorem? Um, yeah. Calculus. Uh, let me ask, See, he okay. knows this stuff. Yeah, well, I mean, I've had all this stuff. It's just been years, been decades. Well, let's, let's throw a, a math question out the audience. And Josh, you can't answer this because you're a mathematician, so you don't get to play. Um, we'll, ask, we'll put Coral on the spot. Coral, oh, God. when you have no, a linear equation, there's only three different types of things solution-wise. What, what can they be? Say it again. If you have a linear equation, there can only be three different types of solutions. Do you know what they are? No. I, I, I'll give you a hint. One of them is no solution. Okay. Anybody else? Know is that the answer? A positive and a negative? Correct and incorrect? I don't know. No. You have, for a linear equation, yeah. there, there could be no solution, one solution, or an infinite number of solutions. 
Yeah. Uh, so, so, okay. so the so the line either that. is parallel to the <laughs> ax solution refresh. axis, like yeah. x-axis, mm -hmm. and so it doesn't solve. Or the line is the axis, which everything is solution. Which is an infinite. Or the line cuts it in one spot. Right. So, so it's, 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 one it's spot. zero, one, or infinite. Yeah. In fact, okay. I, 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 I was thinking about this the other day. I, I was having a discussion with um, Geist View and a couple of the anti-flat earthers um, on Twitter with a guy named Bev. I guess he's a flat earther. Um, and this guy didn't understand horizontal very well, right? Um, <laughs> shocker. <laughs> yeah. But I was trying to explain to him that, look, this is how I learned to understand these concepts. And I was trying to explain to him that vertical does not necessarily mean X, inter, uh, X, X on your X, Y coordinate system. It depends on where you're located out on the earth. For example, a horizontal line is gonna be any tangential line that intersects the circumference yeah. of the circle at one point where the radius is extended from the center of the earth. That is your horizontal at that point, okay? So he didn't quite understand these concepts. And I was trying to explain to him that that horizontal literally is with respect to be an orthogonal to the the, the x the, to the y axis, meaning that you have a right angle that it only intercepts yeah. at one point. That is what it is. Where the dot product of the uv, which is your horizontal and your vertical, the dot product of an orthogonal vectors have to be zero. That's how yeah. I understood these concepts. But you try to explain these so, things to a flat earther, and they're like, yeah. So 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 Steve, you're talking about your line of of, of, of zero one or, or mm -hmm. infinite. Um, now if you go to higher dimension, you talk about a equation of a plane in three dimensions. Um, These are tensor equations. How many solutions? Yeah, now, how many solutions will, will you have? You could obviously have zero, meaning the plane is parallel to your solution plane. Or it intersects the solution plane, in which case you'll have infinite. Yeah, so it's in going to have an infinite amount of, yeah, if you, if you have two planes that intersect, they're going to they're going to intersect an infinite line. Yeah, so you either have zero or infinite. You right. don't have a one, one. Yeah, point you don't solution. have one point. Yeah, that's true. In, in that. So that's why there's a little planner. There's a planner for this. from school. Which is Come kind on. of interesting thing that 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 that's you true, lose yeah. property sometimes when you go to higher dimensions. And this notion of how do you solve a a linear equation, you know, with with stuff. How do you solve a quadratic? How do you go as you keep going up? to, you know, when they discovered the, the solution to a third order equation, a fourth order equation, and people tried to find a fifth order equation, and it turned out there's no general solution. You cannot solve, you can't take a polynomial with five degrees, mm -hmm. generalized in the, you know, A to the X fifth plus B to the X fourth plus C to the X cubed plus D to the X squared plus EX plus F equals zero. That has no um, generalized solution. And, and, and you can actually prove that because each time you go to a higher dimension, you lose something. And by the time you get to five dimensions, you lose the ability to solve it. Um, it's kind of an interesting way that, that that works. But same thing, you know, there's a lot of things where you're, you're, you have a sphere and you have a plane and the solution cuts the plane and either cuts it as a circle or cuts it at a point or cuts it outside. So in the case of, of a plane and your solution is a sphere, you either zero, one, or infinite, that being a circle. Um, so that comes in. Yep. I got some people trying to get in here. One sec. I didn't There's realize. A super chat. Oh, I guess not. I thought I'd... people were trying to get in here. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. So Kawasa, 10,000 um, Korean won. Um, so much nerdy talk. Yeah, we do that in here. Um, <laughs> shocker. You know, that's, what, that's what's so funny is we can actually have nerdy talk. Other, right. other, other channels that <laughs> just like talking about me, they don't have these types of discussions because nobody <laughs> understands. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but it's fun to see if you visualize this stuff. To me, I mean, I'm a, then 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 you start to get this intuitive feel, and that's when you start to sit there and say, well, what happened if I have a four dimensional plane in a five dimensional space? What would that look like, right? And 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 it you can it's hard to, to visualize those higher dimensional things, but you can start with small stuff. And work up and get the idea about the pet trend and then be amazed at the solution spaces. Yeah, I, th I think the most majestic thing is when I, I was learning matrix theory and we were learning, doing Gauss Jordan limitation, Gauss Jordan mm. back substitution method. And what I, what, I, 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 I don't know, I, you know how you have that kind of eureka moment? Yeah. I really didn't understand what the hell we were doing, to be honest with you. I just knew you had to do a, form a triangle. But anyways, I finally reckon, I mean, once I had that Eureka moment that when you're working with matrix, all you're doing is you're finding the coefficients for the linear equations. That's yeah. it. That's all you're doing. It's that simple. And I overthought about the longest time because I'm like, what are we trying to actually solve with these matrices? 
And I took linear, and I had linear equations before, so I understood them. But I didn't really put the connection together how simple it was. You had linear algebra, but, but linear algebra, you saw yeah. But then, but you don't really, it didn't really dawn on me that that's all you're doing is you're solving linear equations using a matrix rather than... A, a, and a matrix is just a different form of the expressions of the coefficients of those linear equations. So. Isn't that weird how math works that way? That... Yeah. <laughs> I, I think that's what I like about math. Um, even though I'm, I'm horrid at it, I, I think that there's something really pretty about how everything just it just ends up working out in these interesting yeah. ways. And there's so many different that, ways. To you, solve yeah, because you have to do row yeah. column substitutions. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and, Whoa, and you know, the way, it's unfortunately the way that math, mathematics is taught in the United States is they spend so much time trying to drill people, drill into people's heads about arithmetic. Yes. Mathematics is not about arithmetic, although there is computational yeah. mathematics. It, it, think of arithmetic like, to a person who's writing a novel in terms of handwriting. Yes. Right? It's penmanship. Penmanship or writing letters is, is like arithmetic as a mathematician. Sure. What you, and even some of the algebra stuff you're doing, you're beginning to look at the grammar, right? Sentence structure. Right. right. What you really want out of mathematics is to be a novelist or short story writer. That's when you see the beauty. That's when the... The, the mathematics really shine. So get out of the trenches of having to do this arithmetic stuff. Yeah. And, you know, I why would you want to take a four-digit number divided by a three-digit number to get its quotient remainder by hand? What possible thing unless unless we've destroyed ourselves and that's you have to live I mean, you can do it, but but what's the point of yeah. uh, spending years doing it? It's, it it turns people off. I, I I agree. Like when I was when I was in school, I went up to pre or up to trig and mm -hmm. pre calculus. And but I haven't done it in many years. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I, I've forgotten most of it. Um, but I, what I really enjoyed about it is when you have like say the formulas and you and you can put all of the numbers in and then it actually ends up solving it you get a sense of accomplishment like oh i figured it out it's like a little mini like eureka moment like oh this worked and yes and that's, that's a fun thing and so the people i i would have brought a channel of a person named three blue one brown oh i love them has has really great visualizations of of really deep fundamental concepts and and it's not it doesn't require it doesn't require knowledge of deep knowledge of mathematics to appreciate what they're doing. It just requires you to be inspired they, they by had, the beauty that they do. They had one of the best videos I've ever seen on for Fourier transformations from the time domain yeah. the, for the frequency domain to the time domain that you watch and you go, holy crap, this makes sense to me because I swear to God, when you're yeah. learning about Fourier transformations and stuff like that, you just don't understand it. I'm sorry. Because because one of the one of the things I you think that don't. they make a mistake of in teaching higher level mathematics is kind of like going through a mathematical history course of all the drudgery necessary to figure out all this stuff, as opposed to I would like to like with three blue one brown again. That's that's their YouTube channel number three B L U E number one B R O N three blue one brown. I would like to to start a, a section with a visualization and show the beauty of, let's say, a complex space and say, look at this amazing stuff. Now let's talk about it, right? Yeah. Um, and let's explore it and let's get into some of the whys and, and do the manipulation of, of that. That would be a much well, better we're way. Later. We're going to get Dr. Um, Kroon on to do a lot of that stuff. People. Please. Go ahead, Coral. Oh, I was just going to say, I think then, too, it would help people understand the the how and not necessarily, or, or the, yeah, the how, uh, not necessarily, like, you have to do it this exact way, and it's the yeah. only way to solve it is to do it this way, but being, it's kind of like uh, teaching someone how to critically think, um, that way they can use it and apply it to other things. Yes. And, and that's that's that that's pretty part of the, the 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 poetry of mathematics and the and the the style of mathematics when you when you deal with these things. The the mechanics of the algebra and the and the and the numbers 
are are just like a writer is trying to express a complex dialogue amongst you know uh these these fictional characters that same sort of thing that mathematician is trying to do is express these concepts and using the tools of it um it 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 does I mean, and so it does give you, um, I think, some more insights. And there's some profound things that you can see with fairly simple visualizations without having to understand the language of the priesthood, right? Sure. That's, that's I have the thing. I have another friend I, on. His name's Epic, he has a channel called Epic Math Time. Uh-huh. He oh. just started it not too long ago. He's a Facebook friend of mine. <laughs> he, he, I helped him uh, give some advice on how to get started on YouTube. So he started a channel um, not too long ago. It's already had 15,000 subs. But I'll put in the uh, I'll put in the link right there in the video in the live chat. But yeah, go check him out. He's a good friend of mine from Facebook. Uh, he's a PhD student. He does really amazing things with with After Effects, and he bought a light board. He went all out. I was like, dude, you're you're you're, you're going way, you're going out there. But um, he's really smart. He knows his math. Um, and his videos mm -hmm. do pretty well. He gets about he looks like look about seven thousand for this views. Derivative of x to the x. Um, but. Uh, nice. Yeah, so maybe if you like math, go check him out. Um, yeah, and the fun thing. So, so then you find that that if someone shows you these, I think these these things in an intuitive sense, and you start to see what's happening with stuff, you can start to see things like what's happening in calculus and differentials equations, and 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 then then do your own experiments and play with the knobs and explore. So you have an appreciation for what's going on, and then you start to explore some of the techniques to figure out how how it's done as opposed to just merely you just gotta to do this stuff for what purpose yeah I and mean, i i remember one of my regular moments is when i learned the convolution theorem in real analysis and i was a number theory guy so i was more interested in the integers and all this 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 other real analysis wasn't very important but but i saw from the convolution theorem an important technique for no being able to multiply called? numbers what's it called and Convolution uh, theorem, I've the convolution theorem, and and, it's it, and, it, and it's, it gives you a technique that allows you to multiply numbers. In fact, oh, it's for, a lot of, for four a lot of work that I do okay. today is multiplying integers by using things like Fourier transforms, mm -hmm. right? And and so doing these 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 things that seem to be this spectral stuff and so forth, and and getting computer to do the spectral analysis of of things to end up multiplying integers together and it actually works that math is solid and it's quite bizarre this 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 one very seems to be a very abstract thing to something very concrete and in fact today a lot of the computation i do is is figure out how to do fourier transforms to implement and in fact you can multiply numbers faster than we do by hand people think that the way you do pencil and paper of of the digits, like you've got a three digit number by three digit number, and all that 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 those 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 things yeah. of products and carries. People think that's how you multiply. No, that's a method to find out what the multiplication is. There are many different ways to multiply. In fact, that's probably one of the one of the least efficient methods. Right. That isn't really stupid. So this, this basically there, there deals with There are really other two, ways to multiply. So you have, you and have you two. I'm oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Finish. No, I think so. So, so, so you're you really are. Mathematics is a is 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 it multiple tip, multiplication is this more fundamental thing, and that pencil and paper method is just one solution. Yeah. So you're, you have two signals. Um, I have a book. Uh, I'll have to find it one of these days, but I know it's in storage. But it's called Digital Signal Processing, mm -hmm. and it literally deals exactly with this topic. I didn't recognize this term, convolution theorem, but. Um, you, you, so basically, in signal processing, you have one signal and you mix it with another signal that'll produce an additional signal. And how one si yes. signal amplification, how the amplitude of one signal and the in, in the digital signal processing, because you have a time, you have these time slices you have to deal with. And so, in digital signal processing, how one digital signal can even have an effect on an analog signal and how you mix yeah. them together. Yeah, I vaguely. Yeah. This is go but, I, but, I didn't but, study but this but stuff the very reason, much. Stephen, the reason why you want to do a transform. Is that when you have frequencies, right? You have your, your your frequency spectrum. Only like frequencies interact with like frequencies. Only identical frequencies interact with themselves, right? They're 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 over 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 a over a uh, over an octave. It's it I mean, even like in music, right? Mm -hmm. The 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 thing that's going to resonate with C sharp is something that's C sharp, mm -hmm. not not 
not the key of E right. or so forth. It's it's identical notes. You, you need a you need harmonic each other. or resonant frequency. Constructor would destructively interfere. Right. So you take a number which is in the time domain and turn it into the frequency domain, and then you do a dot product of the like frequencies and you invert it back. It's a tensor problem. And that's, yeah. Yeah, and that's how you do. And and in fact, it's it's efficient and it works. And it's 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 a beautiful thing. And there's great visualizations for this. Stuff, I, I, we barely the, we barely touched on it. Um, did in, you see in, the, in school, oh, so. real quick? Did you see the TED talk on the music of the universe? Yeah, that was a fun. So pretty and so cool and interesting about how they and, transform same thing the with, like, music from of, some from Jupiter and at, Saturn. Yeah, and I like the fact that you know I, that I, one of my facts today is that the fundamental tone of the of of the universe, the visual universe we see at the Big Bang time, is now been stretched so far out that it's now seventy one octaves below B flat. <gasps> right, so you take B flat and you go seven octaves down, and that's now that fundamental resonance tone. the 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 fundamental structures of the universe are sound waves. Although that early universe, the pre-Big Bang flash, that early Very universe long, of sound waves were, were, were propagating <laughs> at half the speed of light. Yeah. And and those little bubbles that we see in the microwave background now are these giant bubbles of galaxies. They're basically a frozen, the, the, the CMB is basically a frozen snapshot of the disturbances yeah. early on in the quantum fluctuations of the universe. And, and it's all about sound, right? Yeah. And, yeah. And, and the harmonics that were going on. So not only the fundamental tone, um, but then there's harmonics. Just like an instrument, a violin sounds different than a, than, a, than a cello, even if they have to play the same note, because they have different structures. A violin sounds different than a trumpet, because they have different harmonics. Correct. And so the harmonics of the universe the really different. The tells resonance, us about the, the details inside yeah. of the instrument, even that we can't see it. Yeah, pure um, pure tone sounds a lot different from a musical instrument. Yes, completely. We're going to be doing so a show on music as, a, as an instrument has these really interesting harmonics, and the reasons for that we can sit there and say, well, here's the helium that's combining with its grabbing electrons, and here's the hydrogen combining with this. It's you know the hydroproton to forming there, and here is bubble. You can see these these processes happen, which are all aspects of this inst wonderful instrument we call the universe. Um, sound plays a very I have, important I have role. A, I, I tell you what, Len, I have a friend. I, I, you know, I, I never thought about inviting her, but I have an ex-girlfriend um, from high school that uh, I, I dated actually after, well, my senior year and then after uh, high school when, when I got back on leave for a little while. But um, <laughs> but uh, she's, so she's still a dear friend of mine. She's a musician, and she's a classically trained musician that plays many different instruments. Guitar, she plays mm -hmm. the dulcet, she plays, and she She's mm -hmm. really an expert on music. I think I maybe should have her and Mikey Famine come on, and we could do a whole yeah. segment on music theory. And yeah. you maybe you could join us. You can talk about and the math and mathematics be of music theory. That would be amazing. It's important. And so, and by the way, that same music theory you have of those tones, or like why why a particular major chord looks to, sounds the way it does, and the minor chords, you find it in the visual spectrum as well. The reason why red and green kind of have that interesting mix or green and blue have that interesting mix it's the same as an interval of a fifth or a third those frequencies yeah that combine that have a three to two ratio so forth give you pleasing stuff and the ones if you see that bright orange vest that people have in a construction that, that's really glaring you're seeing two very near similar frequencies having that discordant right sound the, 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 the devil's tone the devil's triad but it's visual and there's a lot of visual analogs to music theory. Yeah, the, the devil's triangle, the diminished fifths, diminished third, augmented seconds. Uh, by the way, Riley says and, she's in a music theory. And there's theory. visual analogs cool. of that, which you can see as well, which is really quite great. I would love to do a show on music theory. Uh, uh, yeah. Not to sidetrack too much, but I want to ask somebody a question. Uh, we, we do that a lot of sidetrack. Um, but okay. We're going to wrap it up here soon. But somebody had asked, um, I think it's a fair question. Would I have rather had had Kyle show up and just fought the case on the merits? No, because it's a waste of time. What? What? If he had show up, what would have been any different? He already admitted that he took the money. He already admitted that it was fifty-fifty. He already admitted that he owed the money. Um, what is there? But then it would be done quicker because if he showed up, argued his case, they could rule. But there is no. But, but he, he legit has admitted to all these things. He never argued yeah. he never argued it wasn't 50/50. He never argued he didn't take the money. He said the money was spent and then he submitted false fraudulent invoices. 
So yeah. why would it matter? I already the, the merits of the case are, are prima facie at this point. I mean, you really have to be a complete moron to, to, yeah. to say, look, that wasn't the case, even though Kyle has admitted it was 50-50. I mean, out of his own mouth, he admitted it was 50-50 multiple times. Sure and to the judge, he admitted sure it was 50-50. I would want him to show up, though. I mean, it would it would have meant more for me as a fan of non-set if he showed up and said, this is what happened from my perspective. Yeah, but he had no evidence uh, of any of that. I guarantee it. That's why he never submitted any evidence. Everything he said was a lie. Yeah. I would have respected that more. The fact would have given us closure, is what you said. Right. Well, perhaps, exactly. perhaps I, I can kind of understand that. But like I said, uh, I don't think it, would, it, it clearly wouldn't have made any a difference. He already admitted everything that I've said. Um, he hasn't argued against any of that, and now it's too late, anyways. So. And I think that's all the well, fans really want, though, is is closure when yeah. it comes to that. Well, that won't know? be when he goes to jail for contempt if he doesn't uh, you know, do it. Honestly, well, I and, know. And Monty had well, asked this earlier. And they explained the way it works in in in, uh, yeah. in uh, North Carolina. Uh, and you only get arrested is if you are a contemptor and you don't fix the contempt. Correct. He has not fixed the contempt, so the judge will basically say, look, you have 48 hours or whatever it is to fix the contempt or you go to jail. That's how it usually works. Now, he could arrest him on the spot. Yeah. He could say, look, um, you, 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 you need to do this right now or I'll hold you, you know, you're going to be found in contempt. Plus, there's other sanctions. But sure. he is, he, that's how you go to jail. And now, when you go to jail, you basically stay in there until you fix the contempt. That's it. You have to, and you have to figure out a way to, to do it from jail. But um, you, you, there's ways of doing it. Uh, yeah. you, call, you have to have somebody do it for you, pretty much. But that's how it would work. So if he goes to jail, it is because he had literally had gone to court. Uh, we're trying to have a virtue hearing, and he has told the judge, "No, I didn't obey you, and I'm not going to." Yeah. Well, then not sure with bringing closure to the people either. Yeah, I don't know. It it depends. I mean, I feel that it it would have meant more to. You know, some of us who who did care very much about the show and for both Kyle and Steve. And I I would have had so much more respect if he showed up and apologized and said, I fucked up. How do you feel about him continuing to lie? I mean, li, li, I mean, all he's been doing is, is matter of fact, it's getting progressively worse. Yeah, I, I, it, hurt, it hurts so much to see that because... The show meant so much to some of us. And then uh, he, when he continues to do that, I, I'm, it feels like it's a brand new betrayal. Uh, oh. Someone's trying to get in here, I think, but I don't, I don't Pouring see Pouring salt in the wound is what you're saying. Yeah. 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 Well, like I said, it's, it's, it is what it is. Um, very sad. Yeah, it's very sad. Yeah. I, I, I've yeah. been truthful from day one. Uh, everybody yeah. who's followed me knows that I've been very truthful. Um, if people want to question that, God bless you. Knock yourself out. You're just not going to be around my channel because I don't have anything else to show. I have nothing else to prove. I've been too transparent. I'm going to be backing off from that. That's why I'm not showing receipts as people have asked me to do public. If they want to see it private, absolutely. If you're a patron, you're a GoFundMe, you're just a fan that I know, and you want to come and hang out with me off air, that's fine. But I have to yeah. know who you are because I'm not going to let these trolls... Um, dictate to me what I show and what I don't show. Exactly. Yeah. As, as is your right. Absolutely. I'm going to be far less transparent going forward um, on a lot of things. And I people are going to have to accept smart that. smart because although I do like your your honesty and the way that you're forthright on a lot of things, but uh, I think that just because you have a lot of trolls that are not looking out for your best interests, um, holding certain things close to the vest is not necessarily a bad right. thing. And that's what I'm be doing. And, I'm holding and, things and very, Steve, very close. Also, even my, even my. I also say that. Go ahead. That that some people that follow you because of their loyalty will be sort of anti trolls on the other side, right? That they mm -hmm. they think that that they can go out and attack the other people, and you get you get a really toxic yeah. dump out there. From I'm too lazy for that shit. <laughs> being five. And so, so that's why I, I, you know, that's why I went mute and saw it silent because. It really, it really is your business, the court's business, and the people that are on the other side of the case's business. And then I would, I would like to have a discussion once the court thing is, is, is settled and resolved based upon the merits of what was done. Exactly. In the meantime, but, but I've been factually accurate, haven't I? 
Yeah, I mean, but in the meantime, so let's just wait until the court will do their work, their their yeah, thing, and then discuss the results. I'm, I'm all for that. Like I said, um, you know, it, the people Maybe are like, people, math and philosophy. People, people are saying, though, like, so I have these like, weird secret meetings that I don't know nothing about. My inner circle doesn't know fuck all what I'm doing, and I've kept it that way. Yeah. So, and meanwhile, <laughs> you've got so, this universe sorry. and all this sort of stuff. To, 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 people to like, Steve's on. telling his fans to piss off. No, I'm not. I'm telling the... The, the, the people out there making shit up. You're not going to get anything out of me. You're not going to get anything out what of me. What you're doing my... is not providing the people who are disingenuous ammunition Kill. to misinterpret yeah. exactly. your you know goodwill. Funny? You know what's funny, so... Rez? I swear to God, yeah. the people that I care about, the people that care about me, not one of them gave a shit that I didn't tell them what's going on. Not one. Oh, not I don't one. Care. Reds, chess, bull. I appreciate them, it. Them said, hey, you know, you don't trust me enough. They are like, okay, yeah, cool. That's wise. Mm. Makes sense. Not yeah. one person said you don't trust me to tell Makes me sense to me. On. I don't get it. Right. We are not owed this, and I think that is, there's a fundamental misunderstanding yeah. that some people feel that they're owed an explanation right now. Right, and I, and I promise this though, they everybody will get an explanation one day. It, yeah. it, everything but will eventually come out. That's just a matter. Not that's a right fact. Now. But not if right you, now. And there's, there's probably and also time, still things you can't discuss because of the yeah. legal proceedings as well. Yeah. And in the meantime, focus on more, over with, more, more, more exciting stuff that can be more enriching to you, and let this stuff happen, and you'll you learn sooner or later. Yeah, I just I, I just have to keep my I have to keep people posted apprised of things because I promised them I would. But they've got what all they need. I mean, yeah. again, if you haven't realized by now who's telling the truth and who isn't, I don't know what to tell you, man. Knock, you just knock yourself out. Um, you don't have to believe me. Uh, you can come around here and you don't have to believe me and I don't care if you actively are against me and call me a liar and all this stuff then I just get blocked I don't deal with that well I mean Steve you might want to look at this in a different light though because maybe you should feel flattered because the only way they can earn a living wage is no, by my name has power on you day, day and night so not only are you living rent free in their heads, you're living rent free in their homes as well because you're paying for it. No, I I, I recognize that. I've actually had people point that out to me. They, they say, Steve, you know, you're you have name recognition now. People uh -huh. know of your name, good, bad, or indifferent, um, and yeah. that that actually has empowerment. Uh, and you need to be. More you know, you've made it once you've got organized haters. <laughs> yeah, well, they say yeah. you know people like you know you need to be cognizant of the fact that the people that are that are trusting you do so because they trust you. Um, I, cause I even said, look, I want to go public on certain things like showing you like the receipts I showed you guys landed in, in coral. I was going to make that public, but I had some people very close to me say, you know what, Steve, why don't, yeah. why? why if people don't ask you for, by the way, nobody's asked me for them. Mm -hmm. no, none of my fans, at least has been haters, but nobody that, that watches my stuff has asked me for anything of evidence wise, which is kind of odd. It's, I, I do think you should ask for <laughs> evidence, but I said, well, it's one of those things was they didn't, they trust me enough to say, Hey, you know what? I trust Steve that I don't need to ask for the evidence for this. If they wanted to, that's fine. I wouldn't, I wouldn't by yeah. any means fault them for it. I'd be like, yeah, it's you true. should. You gave to the GoFundMe. Ask me for evidence. I'll show you in a, in a uh, fair hangout. But they don't, they don't, care they don't have to care. It. Yeah, they don't have to care they, enough to get evidence. They want I'll to wait for the punchline and then read the about the author's notes afterwards. So <laughs> <laughs> He wants to read the TLDR at the end. Yeah. Well, I thought that was interesting. I, I'm, I'm joking you know, a bit. But, because like, like I said, if, if if Cheshire or Reds or Bull or or whoever if, or Landon, if they said, "Hey, Steve, there's reasons for this," blah 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 blah, and I would be like, "Okay, I try. That's it. That's all I need. You just it's not a matter of blind faith. It is about they've earned a level of trust. This is a justification of when you have somebody that has earned trust, you can justify believing them based upon what they say. There's nothing wrong with that. That's epistemically sound. Yeah. I mean, there's also there's a, some uh, some people were saying in chat the sunk cost fallacy. I think is where some of the people that are your detractors are coming from that split from the non sequitur fandom because they they spent money on the Patreon or super chats and stuff like that, and then Kyle ruined it for them, and they kind of feel like they wasted their money, and which they kind of did. But I'm in a unique position because I didn't actually give any money to non sequitur i barely watched it in fact i preferred the after shows on your channel i actually discovered your channel first steve and then i discovered non sequitur through that <laughs> and um like i actually preferred the after shows on your channel because we had like that legendary g-man meltdown with our Ra. that was hilarious <laughs> that was a good few years ago now um actually was that on your that, channel that was on the GDC on channel. Great debate. 
Let me answer this question yeah. real quick. It's a fair question, and we'll let it go. Somebody asked me, Steve, you claim to avoid an LLC due to your family bad experience, which, again, my dad was was uh, screwed over uh, by a partner of a quarter million dollars with a, a stu tooling, a steel tooling that he had, and the guy took over basically the business that way by stealing the tooling from him because my dad used to design cassette retrieval systems. He has multiple patents for it. He said, however, an email uh, from you was just released um, where you proposed an LLC for GDC merch years ago. Yes, um, what, what was it for merch? It was, I was gonna have an LLC for the GDC where I was gonna be the owner, um, but then you have people on the board, right? That would've been different. I don't wanna be in an LLC with a partner like I did with, with Kyle suggested because there's no reason to, merely because we had no assets. Um, back then, with the, the when Kyle was talking about an LLC, we were like, well, we have no assets for it. So when I proposed an LLC for the GDC, yeah, that's true. It wasn't for merch, but it was basically for you know uh, a business as a sell. I was like, yeah, maybe this is the way to go, but I was gonna have a partner with it. I did offer, I was like, okay, I'll make somebody a VP. Uh, but other than that, that's that's the reason behind it. But no, I didn't want a partner going into an LLC because it, cause I've learned it doesn't protect you from anything. An LLC is protect your own like own assets so they can't be taken if something goes wrong. That's all. Yeah, so so having a sole proprietor LLC. I would have been a pro sole proprietor LLC, yes. Can but be you're perfectly fine. Of, of, <laughs> of value, consult there, a lawyer. If you do it there's, some, there's, there's, there's some interesting <laughs> points on that though of a sole proprietorship LLC as a prize to just a sole proprietorship versus a corporation because people have uh, there's been some legal issues brought up what's the point of having a sole proprietorship LLC if you're just shielding your own personal assets as you would as a you know uh, I mean you're just basically saying look I have a business but I'm shielding those assets from that business again Consult a consult you know, a lawyer. Usually you have a, not, you usually have an LLC. Not, with you're not hearing legal that. advice here. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But that's but that's that's the reason behind it. So yes, I did talk about an LLC ages ago for the GDC. Um, I don't know how well of fruition that would have gone, but it would have been a sole proprietorship. Yeah. But Kyle Steve. wanted a, not a sole proprietorship, and then he recognized we didn't need an LLC either. So it's also a sub I, what's called a sub -cha sub chapter S corporation. I actually don't remember because it's a while back now, yeah. but. When the non sequitur split happened and essentially kicked you out, did you call for the community to unsub from and, no. and non sequitur no and like dislike, mass dislike and no. whatnot? No, I've never, I've never called for anybody to go do anything to any channel. I didn't think you did, but I couldn't remember. The only time I ever asked anybody to go over when Sherelle had, um, when she was doing something, I had asked people, "Hey, can you let Sherelle know?" That I, she could have me off the guest, but other, but that wasn't to harass. I've never I've never said ever go harass this person, go dislike this video ever to anybody. There's not a single person in my lab chat that has any evidence for that because it's never happened to anybody. Yeah. So yeah, it was more along the lines of this is what uh, what occurred, and this is my receipts of what occurred. This is what such and such is saying. This is the receipts of such, and then people naturally went and confronted. Uh, Kyle and uh, about um, his lies, basically. Yeah, somebody had asked. Uh, there's a. They said the lack of written agreement. I have a written agreement with Kyle. We have right in writing a written agreement in our emails, and I haven't made some of them public yet, but they do exist, absolutely. And it's some of the people I have seen them. Some of those, didn't you? Uh, I don't think I've showed you. My I, obviously my lawyer has them, but I've not shown Bullinator, oh, Cheshire. Oh, when you because you you there, had no, a stream where you I've went like over public. a bunch of. No. Nope. Maybe they're not. not public. Okay. But I have oh. I have us having a discussion, a written agreement from 50-50 from day one, literally from day one, just making sure we are 50-50 from day one. But I'm not making well, it. Well, I mean, you, you have Kyle on video admitting it was 50-50. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it, it's so irrelevant at this that, point, right? That in and of itself yeah. doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We had a ver what it is is when you have a handshake agreement, a verbal agreement, as long as it's backed up by usually something uh, by witness and writing or something like that, it's fine. That, things are done that way all the time. Bullinator and Reds both know we have this agreement, but I also have I have a written agreement in writing in emails where we discuss 50-50 from day one. I made it very clear that's what I wanted, um, but I haven't released that. I don't intend to, not until after the after the trial. Everything's done. Then everything gets released. Yep. I'm keeping certain things. Uh, very close to the chat. The... Is there uh, going to be a non-sec wiki? Is there going to be a non-sec wiki? Possibly. Fandom? Yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah Don't look at me. I'm not doing it. 
I've done fandom before. It's, 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 once you learn how to do it, it's not that bad. It's kind of interesting. But, but like I said, there's nothing, there's nothing need to be settled. I, had, I have the written agreement. All that evidence my lawyer has. We just never needed to use it. We didn't have a discovery phase. Because he never showed up. Because he never showed up. But Fucking the lawyer idiot. has all that discovery, I assure you. Yeah. So if he I showed up, he might have had a outside chance. But who knows? I don't see how. Yeah. Oh, there's always loopholes and shit in the court system. Whatever. Like I said, I'm just sticking to the facts. The facts is that he was found fraud for stealing $60,000 and that uh, uh, he lied about everything from day one. And this is given. And he admitted to lying to him. People are like, oh, look, he lied, but he apologized. Good for him. Okay, well, that's, that's your thing. But I have not lied once, and I've been straight up. And just because I have evidence that I'm not going to show you publicly, yeah, so what? I don't care. The lawyer has it. And again, I'm going to keep things very close to the chest because I don't need to show certain people. Now, again, other people have seen it. I'm not going to say that I haven't shown people. Bullinier seen it. Chester's seen it. A handful of other people have seen it. But it doesn't really matter. Uh, but I have a written agreement that is 50-50 from day one, I assure you. It's not the same as having a contract. I said we don't have a written contract, but a contract and agreement are various, vastly different things. Yeah. I just, I, I, I know I speak for a few people when I say I just can't wait for all this shit to be over so we can put it behind us and never speak about it again. Yeah. I like things on a handshake, I really do. I think handshake agreements are, are fine. I have no problem with them. Um, you know, I like, I like to trust people, and I want a partner that I can trust, and clearly he wasn't. Simple as that. Yeah. Sorry that you know is a that that had to happen. Yeah. You know what? It is what it is. Uh, here's the thing: uh, the people that have stuck around, they see through it, and the people that just want to hate on me and and prop him up as some kind of you know ethical giant for stealing sixty grand, that shows what kind of people they are. That's it. Simple as that. And not just you either; it's people peripheral to you as well. I agree. But anyways, uh, you know, this was fun. I, I'm going to wrap it up. We've, we're definitely going on way too many hours here. Three hours plus. We can wrap so many different, like... <laughs> That's how it usually works. We are going to have, like I see Caffeine Corner. I think we got planned what we're going to be talking about. Um, a lot of it's going to be dealing with... Uh, I don't know if you guys saw, but I had a, a post on um, Twitter that hit 10,000 likes. Or about Holy to hit 10,000 likes. Um, and so we're going to be discussing about Twitter's policies. Um, and inclusive terminologies that they're using that has been proposed forever. And it's, it's just, to me, it's social engineering at its finest. Um, it's not going to be on Monday because, again, Cheshire is going to be out of town. Um, but Tuesday, I think we'll be able to do it. Um, but uh, do you guys do you guys see that tweet? I, I know you not. guys did. Uh, just, wait, just, so what's happening? Uh, Caffeine well, Corner, I think a lot of the discussion is going to be on social engineering. Um, cause I had, uh, let me see if I can just Oh, right. right. But specifically, you said there was a specific example? Or? Yeah, I'll show you. One sec. So, um, Twitter engineering, which I found out actually is a legit thing. I, I thought this was like the onion at first. Um, it says, we're starting to, with a set of words we want to move away from and favor a more inclusive language, such as. Now, Twitter engineering has 2 million, 1.2 million followers. Right? 1.2 million yeah. followers. And so they put this out, and they got about 5,000 likes. I tweeted this. Someone, anyone, please, for the love of anything holy, tell me this. I, mean, I should have said, A, okay, whatever. Tell me this is a very late April Fool's joke. This is like the onion. This has got 9.3 thousand likes, twice as many as the Twitter got. It's not pushing oh, 10,000 likes, yeah. Um, and I think it's, it, it's really indicative of the fact that people are just sick of social engineering and, and thought police. And so yeah. I think a lot of our discussion on Caffeine Corner is going to be on that. Right. They have what man hours? What do they want it to say? Oh, people uh, hours? Yeah, people hours, something like that. Person hours. Anyways, we, did we lose Landon? Did he accidentally leave? I, or I think so. Oh. That was that was weird. Landon, where'd you go? Hard. Interesting. Yeah, he didn't say goodbye. Or just Landon hours. left Maybe. to go back to his fourth dimensional universe. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Get another bottle of wine. All right, guys. Well, thanks for joining us for the Roman Coke Night tonight on the 4th of July. Uh, this was fun. Uh, I did all my updates. Probably won't be some more for quite some time. Uh, again, I, I'm just I'm doing what I need to do to come out way ahead uh, in, in all this legal stuff. And uh, I'm, I'm I'm not somebody who rolls over. I'm going to fight tooth and nail. People know this about me. And uh, I'm 
I'm just going to be me and do my thing like I went to do before. I want to do my caffeine corn. I want to do my science shows. I want to do my philosophy shows. And if people want to like diss on me for the rest of their lives, yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. Um, it just tells me that I'm doing something right and they have no content. But anyways, uh, uh, Coral, why don't you give us her last... Or actually, you know what? Rez, why don't you give us the last... Uh, you know what? Rez, you're going to give me my last thought. So, Coral, you go. Tell me what you got to think and then we'll give Rez the last thought. Okay, yeah. I, um, so the only thing... I guess I'll take a moment to show real quick. Um, I, ha I just posted a new video and I haven't done that in quite a few months. So if you guys want to check it out, I would love to hear your guys' thoughts on it and maybe where... I went wrong or not or whatever. Uh, my concept is join the conversation. So I really do want to have interesting conversations and things like that. So uh, my, my final thoughts is, as always, when given multiple options, try to choose the least shitty one. Yeah, there you go. How about just don't be a crappy, shitty person? Yeah, don't be mm. a douche. How about that one? It's nice to be nice. Yeah. All right. uh, Lana, what do you got for us? I'm gonna give Rez um, a couple of it. I, I would I would want to put a point out for what uh, Ansgar and David are doing in in their their new show. Um, I also like to give a shout out for uh, the Ben podcast and thing that Mikey is doing. That's got some fun stuff. Um, of course, my my good friend uh, uh, Pimp Monk has got a interesting Morning Wood show. If you're into comedy, so you have you have wait, social things. Funny? Wait, wait, Pimp Monk's funny. Uh, <laughs> yes, according to some people, his mom. No, 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 he's he's actually he actually is a quite a a, a really skilled uh, um, uh, improv guy. Yeah, I know. And uh, so, so I would I would again uh, check out uh, what Ansgar and David are doing. Check out what Mike is doing the Bin podcast and and Pimp Monk for his laughs. And of course, you know, there's this guy up there uh, who's who's got some interesting stuff. Yeah, and I appreciate, it. like I said. Uh, Patreon and the members. If you get, if you become a member on the YouTube video, you get a green. And you don't have to worry about slow mode, um, which is kind of nice. So I appreciate the people that became members. Um, my Patreon, um, I appreciate every one of you guys. Uh, many of them have been patrons for a very long time. Uh, I mean, I just thank you so much. I, and again, now that I can put forth content, hopefully we can get back into the regular routine. So I'm going to have those three shows for sure, right? Caffeine Corner, uh, Over and Under, and Rum and Coke. And in between those, we're going to have other things like guests coming on to talk about things and so we're gonna have we're gonna have we're stuff gonna, out there and we you know uh, as i say uh you know, see we you know i talked about some some things that are in a non-technical area that i think might be might be interesting so yeah absolutely all right rez you say the last word then i'm gonna end this i don't know why you always leave it to me i've got nothing to fucking say man i'm a dumb because i'm not you're an australian that's gonna get, be like i'm the australian he just like you know hates me so it has a cute voice. Come on. Allegedly. Allegedly. Yeah. <laughs> He's actually just a Brit. We know this. <laughs> I wish. I would mean I'm getting I paid. Australia doesn't exist. That's Apparently. Why. Yeah, right. he's a Brit that gets paid to pretend to be a, a but, but they be cut down depending on your belief. Can fair because Susan will ban you if your jokes are deemed potentially offensive to Australians. So Yeah. No joke. Go. We're, how about all right, Rez, if you don't want the last word, I'll take it. Last word. This is a true story, again. Facts. Um, I, I know a lot of people. Not a lot of concrete creators don't care about them, but I, I, I think they're they're important. Fact: Land and Kurt Noel got permanently banned from YouTube by joking about Australia not existing. Are you serious? I am dead ass serious. Yeah, and, and, and I've never posted a video to to uh, there, but I'm but, you not know, even joking. Red Eye was a fan. And we I, we were making comments about your know, ground harnesses that you have to have because you fall off and this sort of thing. Was it that that? I mean, it was. It was done in tongue in cheek, but you know. Yeah. You should always uh, add either JK or slash S at the end, just yeah. in case. Yeah, you yes. know what? I'm going to start doing that. I thought about that the other day. Um, yeah. Somebody had mentioned on Twitter something about sarcasm, and you have to do that. Yeah. And it got me thinking, you know what? I might just include slash S on any post. Yeah. There's a remote chance of somebody <laughs> not getting the joke. Yeah. It's sad but, that we got to do that in today's society, though, right? I started to add that legit because, it, you know, CYA all day long. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I just, it, it's, it's sad that people don't understand humor. Because, again, I have a very warped sense of humor. I got a dark sense of humor. I know Coral does. God, does she have a warped <laughs> sense of humor. Um, <laughs> there's nothing yes. wrong with that, but you, you just have to know your audience, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And I'm shit at knowing my audience. <laughs>
All right, guys, thanks a lot for watching. Uh, I'm going to take it out, and you guys have a safe, uh, festive uh, Fourth of July holiday. And we'll see you. Uh, well, I'll see you on Tuesday again. And it's hi, the hi, hi. Oh, that's right. He's in the future. Mm hmm. Sorry, the fifth.